You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. It's been alleged that I oh, used to get kilos of puffing Joe every month. You know I mean? <laughs> That's a big ass. That's coming in. <laughs> no, it's your mum, mate. Your mum. Well, your mum. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Your mum. Don't about asses. Yeah. No, no, don't <laughs> cut me short. Don't cut me, don't cut me short. Okay. The, the kilos only come from your mum. Because even the nurses, the doctors and the admin, yeah, they only bring in the answers and a few pills and a few bits and pieces, but the big lumps, they come from your mum, mate. Come on, be Do honest, no, no, be honest, be honest. Right, I, I, be, no, 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 please, be honest. No, of course. They're all I, fucking I, at it. I, I am honest, it's become really prevalent. Right, I left. Right, percentage, percentage of prisoners snitching and being sneaks. On each other. Yeah. A lot more than it used to be. He's fucking like this, <laughs> fucking. And then as you're bending your arm, you're like, Oh, you fucking slug! Break it! Break it! Left arm, you mug! Break it! I don't fucking care! You've got a phone in your pocket that you know you've taken from my mate's ass. You know you've took it, you know you've took it from my mate, you know you've took it from my mate's ass. You fucking know you took it from my mate's ass. So you feel the best thing to do is make a phone call to somebody who knows I don't fucking know while you're walking into the police station to hand yourself in for two murders. Well, four murders now. Oh, four, oh, yeah, yeah. Why would you go into the police station with the phone that connects me to you? Only a small percentage of these cunts that dig them out. Do you know what I mean? Like, even the nonces, the sickest nonces get treated like fucking Rory. Like, you're quick enough to kill fucking powerful inmates that fucking drive you mad for years. They've killed about four of my pals in prison. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying he has specifically, but the fucking system have killed them. And they put it behind fucking bullshit and say, no, he hung himself or he killed him, he cut his wrist. No, they don't, mate. They don't, the fucking screws do it. The screws do it. My pal would never have killed himself. The bit I'm now remembering, and it'll make my fucking blood boil. No, I like that. I'm hey, not... cunt! Open my door! He must have been a fucking person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not letting him get away with this. I regret not having a proper life. I regret, like, not having nice Christmases, not being there for my kids. You know, like, all them things you regret, all that sort of stuff. Boom, we're on. Boom. Merry Christmas, everybody. Ho, and, ho, ho. <laughs> and today, I've got an absolute exclusive. It's an absolute cracker. It is Marvin Herbert, the most explosive guy I've had on the show. And then I've got Sam Samsworth, prison guard. We've got two opposite people sitting across. I'm going to ask you first, Sam, what do you think of Marv that you first met him? Just now? Yeah. Uh, Cockney... Market trader, get him on the store. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, geezer, buy this. You know what I mean? He's um, very animated, very animated. How do you? But I do recognise him. I did recognise him in strange ways when I were there. Yeah. Um, I can't remember him being on Cat A unit, but I remember seeing him about. So yeah. How does it feel sitting across from a former screw? <laughs> but, see, see, with me, yeah. Like I just said. It, it's only the men, innit? Like, screws are screws, police officers are police officers doing their job. It's how they treat me. Do you understand? So, I don't care who's a screw. I don't care who's a police officer. They've got a job. I had a job. So, when I was a criminal, he was a screw on one side of the fence. I was a criminal on the other side of the fence. Now, if we could create some harmony in the middle, so he don't affect me and I don't affect him, then it's good. If we can't, then it's fucking ag. And that was how simple it was. And... They had a uh, 30, 40 man strong team on the press of a bell. So you had to be in quick with these like. So How many times did that happen with you? Oh, every week. <laughs> every week. If it never happened in the week, there was something wrong. Mm -hmm. Like every week I was getting bent up and taken down the block. Like every week, sometimes twice a week. And then it got to, the, yeah, just sometimes twice a week. Was that sore? Beating the shit out of you, teams? Do you know what? If I'm being honest, yeah. It was a, a coping mechanism. <laughs> what, what, what bit was the coping mechanism? The, 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 the getting better, the suffering, the, like getting bent up, getting taken down the block. It's like, do you know like sometimes you, you want to, but you feel like a lunatic doing it. So the only way to do that is to like, play do you know rugby. What? 
fuck it. Mm-hmm. Boom, bend the screw. And then the screw, they'll, they'll press the bell. You get bent up. And then as you're bending your arm, you're like, oh, you fucking slug! Break it! Break it! Left arm, you mug! Break it! I don't fucking care! You fucking slags! And it was just venting, getting rid of all that built-up aggression. You go down the block, you go in the strip cell, you've been in the strip, like, you get put in the cell first and they release and they run out. So once they, they release the lock, they'll run out the cell and then they bang the door up and then they observe you for 12 hours. So then they think you're calm. So what I do, I, within that 12 hours, all I do is press up, sit up, squat fast, burpee. So, so every time I look through my door, I'm press up, burpee, squatting, bur- and then they might turn through two, three, four o'clock in the night, I'm sleeping. Six, seven o'clock in the morning, I'm up again because I'm up as soon as I hear a key on the landing. So whenever they look through my flat, I'm doing work up, press up. My cell door opens, as soon as it opens, it's off. Right? Then you go strip cell. So now it's mind games. Now it's mind games because now I have to break the governor. Because if you break the governor, then you get results. The way you break the governor is by charging, like costing him money. How you cost him money is by instilling fines within the prison system. When you know the system, so you do all your thing, go down the block, strip cell. So you go in the strip cell and they can hold you in the strip cell for three days. And they can't put you back in the strip cell if they take you out of the strip cell. They've got to go through a procedure, otherwise they have to pay a large amount of money. So it's just about getting in that strip cell and standing in that strip cell for as long as possible. The governors don't like it. So they come down, they talk to you. They say, look, what can we do, Herbert? This isn't healthy. It's not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for the inmates. It's not good for the prison. What is it we can do, Herbert? I said, I don't like that fucking horrible bastard. Screw, he's a fucking cunt. All he wants to do is X, Y, Z. And then they broker a little deal with you. How would you deal with somebody like Marvin? And the prison system. We had a lot. We had a lot. Um, when we're in private sector, right? Private sector gets a bad press. Let me tell you. When we're at Forest Bank, you used to get everyone. People like Marvin, Birmingham, Scotland, you name it. Yeah. They come, the segregation had a door at the end and they come off vans from all over, right? Nobody wants to go to a private sector prison, do they? I don't know. I don't, mm, well, private, private sector, is that, is that the, the Dove Gates and all them sort yeah, of yeah, things? Yeah. yeah, they do. They love them. They love them. No, prisoners love them. We used to get them in the block, though, right? So Marvin, um, a lot of people I talk with, when he said someone in the middle, uh, thinking of somebody now I used to work that block with, he's still in job now, I don't want to embarrass him, low way. You know, Marvin, he's angry, he's coming, so he'd leave him a bit, go and talk to him. And a, a lot of it depends, like he says, it does depend on, on how you treat and how you treat people. Yeah, the segregation me for boring. It were boring, boring place to work. The strips are like he says. It's twenty four hours now. They used to use them a lot. Twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Because human rights. See, uh, the See, isolation, days. isolation. You got nothing apart from a slot. There's a little slit. Yeah, around the observation bottom. to make right. sure they're not. I, so that's I suicide about watch it. with the Danny G. Right, he's in there. They can't suicide. There's nothing in there. There's no, there's no, there's nothing in it. It's just, it's just all the floors, all the, it's just sealed. They literally, it's like sealed get room. a bedpan, yeah. get a bedpan and a pot to piss in, and maybe some like plastic cups of water. No, no, what in the strip cell? In no, ours, they did. No, you did not. No, no, maybe that's the mental, the mental place or the Never hospital. You. But strip cell, you got nothing. And what they do in the strip cell, you got a blanket and a mad pair of big shorts. They give you these mad shorts, like this kit they give you. But you, I've never worn the kit in the strip cell. Do you know what I mean, it's like, and then. Um, Basically, they come three times to give you your dinner and you've got to eat it and then give you the plate back. Like, you're not allowed to keep anything in that cell. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then if you do kick off... <laughs> Which was every put, day. Yeah, they put you in a body belt. So now you're in a strip <laughs> cell, right? Can't speak to them, can't see no one, in a, in a body belt. So you can't even touch nothing. You can't do nothing. Body belt now, again, special permission because, obviously, human rights and everything. Do you know what body belt is? Yeah, like the strip, the, the straight jacket. No, 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 no. It's like a big belt that goes around here, and it's got a handcuff there and a handcuff there, and you're just in it like that. And your cock's out, your balls are out, everything's out. You're just in the, it's naked? A, naked, that's it, in the strip. Well, if you choose not to wear clothes in there, yeah. Yeah, but this is what see. So what's got, the idea of not wearing clothes then? Because it's just, it's just weakness, isn't it? We're in the fucking seg, mate. Let's have it! You cunt! Open my fucking door! What? You mug! Yeah? You're a fucking what? Come on! And they, they, it's hard for a man, right? And trust me, it's hard for a man to steam into a naked man. It's hard for a man to fight a naked man. So if you've got three or four people, what they think about first is restraining you. They don't think about coming in and fighting you. So you've got the upper hand when you're prepared to fight because 
Let me in on this. Right, now now we can start talking about it. Mm -hmm. This is what public don't understand, yeah? I'm taught, we meet two mates, three officer team, and you have a leg man, a fourth man. So yeah. if Marvin's an handful and we do get him on deck and he's thrashing out, you get someone on the legs, you take somebody's legs out, you take a lot of the power base away, yeah? But, like he says, if I'm going in there... I'm concentrating on getting hold of his right arm and somebody else's left arm and someone protecting his head. If he's a street fighter, you know, and comes out punching, vast majority of prison officers don't think standing on the feet. He'll tell you now, we can get all this out. I'm glad about this. Prison officers, 100 prison officers here. You've got your granny, you're at middle, number 50, and maybe you might have one like Marvin because they were one or two, but not many. At other end, yeah. And everyone in between, aunties, uncles, sisters. Yeah, so you're going in with him, he's a fighter. So Marvin is probably, in strange ways, when he were there, if that's how he was, you might have five prisoners, potentially like Marvin, that's it. 1,200 prisoners, five like him, fighting the system, yeah? So there's lads I work with who were good. If you got somebody who were good at CNR, they'd still work it out. You might take a couple of punches or whatever. However... Most people are going to get levered. I've, I've seen people like Marvin, some clever manager, will get free staff and you look and you think, it's not going to end well, this. When my mate first started, we had a black lad, he was an animal. So my mate is new to the job, yeah? They sent him and two other new staff, they got battered. battered yeah. Absolutely smashed. <laughs> yeah? When, they, when they're coming with, with, with the shields around, they're not experienced, yeah? Mm. All you do... Pull the shield yeah. and they're, they're stuck on it. They're stuck on it. So you pull it down like I just punch me in the face, punch it. <laughs> the other the thing time. is, the other thing is, in all my time, planned removal, so like we've got a planned removal for Marvin, we've got all gear on. Mm -hmm. I probably had three fights. Most of them, they surrender. Or you go in and it's peaceful. So people aren't used to it and they don't know what to do. Did you have a surrender, Marv? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, the biggest, the biggest <laughs> accolade I got, right, was from Swellside. <clears throat> it was a uh, full Fulp, S O Fulp or Fawn, and he was like an ex-military man, like ripped, like like you know, like he was like an older gentleman, but he was one of them really peaceful people. But he was known in the prison as an hard nut, same as Jonesy and Smith from Wandsworth. So all the major screws that could have a rat, right? I always had it with them. So this geezer, and he come at me after. We had a mad tear up, and he come after me. And I said, "But you know what?" He said, I, I, "I said I'm going to shake you." Man. I said, "Why?" He said, "That was the longest time it's ever took us to get anybody to the floor. I never expected that from you." And I was like, "I don't know what. I really appreciate you saying that." Do you know what I'm saying because I was an ego freak, and it was more about they're not getting me down. That I'm not letting them take me down. Do you know what I'm saying? But that was the, 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 the only sort of props I got. And that SO was a real powerful individual within the prison system. You know, like you got you got officers, but then you've got officers. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You've got officers that walk on the wing and they'll, they'll come in your cell and they'll have a fucking tear up with you. Not what? many. No, 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 I'm saying. Not many. There ain't Not many. many. This was one Is of them. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A dozen. I've met a dozen. We said this on the way down, didn't we? Maybe a dozen, Marvin, lads who were fighters. So yeah. a one on one. They know your reputation, know what you like. Yeah, they'll just come would, to the Would food. still yeah. go come in and sell you, but maybe a dozen. Fair play, man. No, they yeah, do, they yeah. do need to understand that. No, they do, man. I'm telling you, I've met them all the world, throughout my whole sentence, right? Mm. I've met them out throughout my whole sentence. Um, I've never had a straightener in a cell with an officer. Do you know what I mean? But I've heard them offer people out. One officer come to my cell, and then as he come in, close the door, and I was like... And then he was like, Herbert, do we really have to go down this road? And I said, like, yeah, come on. I, I don't know whether or not he Did wanted to fight. Did have respect for him for doing that? Yeah, because it's, it's more about the way you communicate with us, isn't it? It's not about of course, punishment. That, that it's, it. it's just that yeah. you, you make me feel like a mug in front of everyone or you said something that like, embarrassed me in front of everyone. And like, I don't know you. Like, so that's the ego part mm -hmm. of us that makes us want to react. But then you've got officers that think you're a piece of shit because you're a criminal. They're the ones that, that really do my yeah. head in. Did you, you ever I mean? rub, butter, rub butter or shit on yourself or anything? You've seen for no, so and yeah, so did that, 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 that ever happen? Yeah, it happens, yeah, my yeah. mates used to do it. My mate, <laughs> what is, young, young <laughs> offenders. Why? 
Because you can't get a grip. You yeah. know, if I'm trying to get hold of your arm and put you in a lock, if you've got baby mm -hmm. whatever, baby oil. No, it was baby oil or, or coconut baby butter. Oil, and they also used to put shampoo on the floor. So yeah, that, that's what I used to do. That's yeah, what I do. Shampoo the floor. Listen, while we've Just got Marvin angry, let, let's talk about this again. Okay. Right, again. So, right, like I've said, maybe five prisoners like him in strange ways at any one time. Not all necessarily kicking off. Marvin has grown up in a violent world, yeah? So he's not going to be intimidated by me or anyone else. However big they are, you know, and people... I'll pause you for a minute. I'll tell you what does intimidate you. Three o'clock in the morning when you hear the landing row, and you know that's the Mufti. Because they've got a national Mufti squad. Yeah. We was touching on the Mufti because you used that the man's with the black clavers. You told me that, I never had a clue what the fuck <laughs> they were talking about. Well, so that's when, that's when you think, they're coming for me. They're coming for me. When you hear them go past you, you think, Whew. right, planned yeah. removal. It must be scary, right? Mm -hmm. No, no only a national plan. Only a national, because this Oh, one, the nationals, yeah. The nationals are different gravy. They're different they, they gravy. They train. That's yeah, all they do. Mm -hmm. They right, train. Right. You've got the elite, you've got prison officers, and you've got the elite prison officers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you've got these elite prison officers that all they're trained to do is extract the worst, the hardest, and the most violent criminals at three o'clock in the morning. However, now, a lot of their role is advisory. So if they were called out to yeah yeah, a lot. So if they come strange ways and there's an hostage situation or something, they'd be advising and looking what's going on. Yeah, they do have capacity. They have eighteen van full of stuff that I wouldn't talk about it if I knew we're on it. But they they have a lot at their disposal. Yeah, they train. They physically fit. They train to work at heights. Everything, every situation. But a lot of it now is advisory. Yeah, so they are like. So they come for the elite. Who gives the green light for these people? Is this higher? Right. Let, let's that... just say Marvin is in a cell with a hostage at Strange Ways on C Wing. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, they might get a phone call very quickly. Yeah, they have a rapid response team who are on shift all the time and they might turn up and advise or look at the scene. Because there's one or two things if. If there's a threat to like, you've got to make a decision. It's not an easy decision. If he's got a knife and he's cutting someone, you know, what are you going to do? Someone's got to make that decision and that's what they're there for. Yeah. So in normal circumstances, yeah, you will deal with something in house. You'll have your own nostrils negotiators. You'll have a team. You'll have a CNR instructor, whatever. But they're always there for advisory. Are they type. trained corporals, trained screws, or army? What are they? No, no, no. The prison officers, right? CNR instructors. So I were taught private and public sector, same. All the locks Marvin's on about. You are taught to safely take someone to the floor. You can restrain them standing up. I've never restrained anyone standing up. You take them to the floor. You get them in locks. It's safe for them and safe to move them. Yeah, get them cuffed or whatever. Everyone goes through that training. Most of them will have been CNR instructors, so they're teaching me, and then they get further training. All they do, mate, is, I don't know whether they work two on, two off, they train, they, they're in the gym, they're working at ladders, breaking into cells, checking new gear, pyros, everything, yeah? And then they have two week off, something like that. Or two week on call and two week training. But they're the ones you've got to worry about. Yeah. They're the only ones I ever worried about. Because they're the ones when you wake up and you're in Franklin block or fucking somewhere in the middle of nowhere block and you don't know where you are and they don't talk, you're incommunicado. You just wake up, you think, what jail am I in? And you've got to wait for the inmates to wake up or inmates make noise, what jail were you, mate? And you think, fuck, Wakefield block or Durham block or, you know what I mean? Because when you get ghosted by the nationals, you go block to block to block to block and you don't come out of the block. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. the dispersals that I went into, I never actually went on the wings. I mean, some of them, I didn't even know where I was. I just went there for a few days and then got moved out a couple of weeks later and then moved out another couple of weeks later. And then you get spoken to by, um, it's like it's like a national governor. Like I don't know what they call them, but a governor comes in, he speaks, he said, listen, we want to, we can't keep doing this. You can't keep doing that. Like you need to really focus on what you're doing for the rest of your sentence. Like, this is madness. You're going to end up staying in the, in, in the cages at Wakefield. We've got no other options to do with this. You're not doing it long enough. You're only doing a five-year sentence. Why are you behaving like this? And then when I explain myself, then things get put in your file. So in my page 16, there were certain things, like you know about the page 16. Yeah. So the page 16, in my page 16, no threat 
was to be overlooked, no matter how big or small. Every threat is to be taken directly as intentional, and that I cannot be in like what they say. Um, I wasn't new. Don't use. Don't. I don't know what the word was, but it's basically don't wind me up. Do you know what I mean? And 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 on one page in cannabis, he smokes. Like I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like let him smoke cannabis, basically. And I was one of the only people. Well, I don't know because for years I couldn't understand why. I'd never get. I'd never get piss tested. I never get fucking drove mad. I never got my. I got myself spun a couple of times. And I said to, I've got anything in here. I said, ah, oh, there's come shavings over there. Because I used to, when I used to cut the bars up, <laughs> it's bad. You cut a bar of puff up, you've got nine ounces of puff. So you cut a bar of puff up, you get loads of shavings. Oh. Yeah. It's a lot of fucking harsh, mate. Yeah, well, it's been it's been alleged that I used to get kilos of puff in jail every month. You know I mean? That's <laughs> a big ass that's coming in. <laughs> no, it's your mob, mate. Your mob. Now, listen, your mob. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Your mob. Uh, don't about uh, asses. Uh, hold on. Don't <laughs> cut me short. Don't cut me, don't cut me short. Okay. The, the kilos only come from your mob. Because even the nurses, the doctors and the admin, yeah, they only bring in the answers and a few pills and a few bits and pieces, but the big lumps, they come from your mob, mate. I'm happy with that. Let's, yeah. bef before he goes too far, the aggression bit, let's go back to that and then talk about last time when Marvin mm -hmm. in. So, the aggression bit, what I'm telling you, you can see what he's like. Yeah. Yeah. He's a handful. 95% yeah. of people I work with never had a fight in their life. Never. Yeah. They're not, they're not used to that. Uh, a lot of stuff, bottle, let's talk about bottle. Prison officers, it's, there's lots of prison officers don't have bottle. When it becomes challenging, like somebody like Marvin, it's a back step. You know, the normal people, your aunties, your sisters, your uncles. Mm -hmm. So Marvin, he's, he's not scared of anyone. Lots of prisoners have grown up in violent environment and you've got normal people, not necessarily normal. Do you obviously. think people would leave their job because of people at like Marvin? A lot of people won't come into contact with people. So let's say he had a, a dust up at Strangeways and ended up down the block. The amount of people that's dealing with him, seg staff are used to dealing, not necessarily good, although some I work with were, like Lowe, good at dealing with violent people. You get used to it. On the healthcare, the mentally unwell, I got used to working with people with mentally unwell. Mm. It's just a communication, when, isn't when, it? Yeah, yeah, of course. It, when was the last time you were in Marvin? 2013, 2014. Right, so now, um, as I believe it was, it might have changed its name, so prisoners like Marvin now, they've got Challenging Behaviour Programme. That name might have changed in the last few years. But basically, so Marvin's kicking off. He's down the block, you know. Um, he's not in normal pop. He's a problem. Sign him up to Challenging Behaviour. Once you're on that, he will be kept in sort of special conditions. So he might be on the Cat A unit, strange ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on Challenging Behaviour. It's monitored. Things are noted differently. And he'd be treated differently. He, on a challenging behaviour, he would not be on a normal wing, yeah? And the idea is, you know, smaller groups, cat A unit, not very big, was it? Maximum 30, 35 prisoners. It's a smaller split up, unit. Split up, split like, yeah. that's, that's, that's That was the only unit I've ever been on yeah. that wasn't split up. Yeah, it's, it's only a small unit, strange ways. Oh, it's, not, it's, a big, it's a big unit compared no, to normal it's, units. It's a big unit compared to units. But what I mean is, if you go to Wakey, Cat A's can be all over the jail, whereas there, they're all kept together, aren't they? Yeah, but there's a unit. There's still, right, so you've got Cat A's, and then you've got the units. Mm -hmm. They're two different prisons, because the Cat A's are different, and then you've got the double Cat A. Well, I need to be away from all the Cat A's as well, do you understand? So yeah. our units are different. So the normal unit, it'd be maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 12 cells per spur, or six cells per spur, and then there'll be three spurs for the unit. But I only see six people in the whole year, apart from when I went, no, no, in the visits. You go on, you don't even go and see no one on visits. You go, you get, get, you get taken into a bus and you get taken to a little unit, and then you go on a visit. And like, your missus gets drove in around the prison. Do you know what I mean, you don't go on a normal visit and all. So <clears throat> the units are segregated from everyone in, um, strange ways, the unit was a wing, a whole wing. So you could have 30 people and they wouldn't be able to segregate us. Mm -hmm. Jim, 
It's the contained, isn't it? Yeah, but it's if you had 30 cat gym. eyes on that jink, yeah. on that wink, there'd be problems, mate. How did you get the screws to bring stuff in? Were they threatened or were they just doing it through money? Well, there's, there's a few ways. There's a few ways of doing it. Um, ego, you know, necessity and need, really. So, depends. You can, you're never going to make them do something to risk their job. That's one thing. So, you ain't going to get a, a, a screw to be your friend to bring something in. But you've got to make it worth it for him or something that he fears. Or her. Yeah, or her, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying, Did you know a lot of people who were bringing stuff in? In the private sector, right, um, lots of people fell by the way, right? As an officer, yeah, a lot of my friends are like, everyone's a scumbag. I work with some young people, 19, 20-year-olds. So you imagine somebody coming up against Marvin who's 19 or 20, yeah? And private sector, wing, 86, two staff, that's all. They're all over you. I got asked, because I'm friendly, people have come up. You, you seem friendly, boss. Go away. Do you know what I mean? All the time. All the time. All the time. Young lad. So, he was 20. He looked about 15. Yeah? I worked with him 18 months. He disappeared. Yeah? Gone. Didn't phone in sick. Never came back. Prison tried to contact him. Nothing. I, I guessed that, you know, he'd probably been bringing stuff in. Fast forward, strange ways, 2007, a lad from dispersal come from Franklin on accumulated visits, which means they come back to Manchester and they see the family for a month every day. Yeah, save the visits up. So he mentioned him, this lad. What did you do? We were on at him six months, Miss Samworth brought a phone in, leave me alone. He would then bring in bottles of Coke and Jack Daniels in at weekend, another couple of phones. He says, roll or it. We had him in his pocket and then he just left. The only way out for that lad was to leave, yeah? He was in a bad place. People had said, scumbag, you know, bent screw, horrible, nasty. 1920, he looked 15. I now know him. I know him now, he's married. Um, what will he be now? He'll be, he'll be heading towards 40, two kids, normal lad. It is not a job for young people. Young people are vulnerable. These lads, all over people, staff, you can see weaknesses in staff, the normal people. Yeah. It's right. very yeah. intimidating right. place. You, so you've got, you've got avenues, right? So some of the things that I've done, well, basically, screws like Sam, rather than do anything, I'd just get 1,500 quid in a little wad, and I'd walk up to him and say, Gov, you got a minute? He'd go, yeah. Because he don't talk like all the other screws. I'd say, Gov, here a minute, here a minute. Yeah, I'll come in myself and say, he go, what's up, mate? I said, I'll just find something on my finger, yeah. Give him the 1500 quid. I said, I just found out. I ain't going to say nothing. Take it home, mate. Do what you want with it. You had 15 tonne in the jail? Yeah, it's, it's a part of the graft. Yeah. Like, I had everything in jail. Right, so you get it and you plug it. You, you just get You have mm -hmm. money. Like when, like, when you're targeting people, then you get ready for it, innit? So you get the 1500 quid in the. Da, da, da. If, right. from our side again, if you've got money in jail, you've got a problem. That's what they always tell you. Why? Well, how are you, you going to get cash in? If it's getting in, then it's a big problem. You know, Marvin is loaded. When I were at bank, there were a lad who used to leave pictures of his girlfriend under pillar. Not naked, she was pretty. He'd say to me, mate, Mr. Hart, oh, nearly mentioned his name, I'm glad I didn't. Go and have a look, I've got some more pictures of missus, yeah? One day, there's three grand there, yeah? Phone security manager, security manager come down, why have you phoned me? Three grand. Why didn't you just keep it? You know, you've, you've caused us loads of problems now. So I I come across a £20 note on K-Wing. A lad got a £20 note in a letter. He give it me. Can you put that in bank? You're not supposed to send money in. It should have never got to wing. I give it my manager. I says, is that 20 quid I owe you, Mr. Burt? Did you know Mr. Burt? Yeah. Did you like him? Yeah, well, bang, Exactly, well, there you go. Bertie, Bertie Bassey. I give him him. 20 quid. He says, you don't owe me any money. I says, no one at cons has just given me. He went fucking bananas. He had to go down security. He had to be all documented. Yeah? It's a big problem. So, yeah. I, For me, Sam, you're a good guy. You seem a good prison officer. How would you have dealt with Sam in the jail? I wouldn't have taken the money. Yeah. But, you know. How would you have, would you have tried to manipulate him? Would you have realised he's a good guy and made friends? No, if, no, if, well, there's plenty. There's probably yeah, plenty there's, in there. Yeah. So you move on. Yeah. Is, that's it. You just want it. One bite, if you don't work, move on to the next one. And then it's, 
You find out what car they drive. You speak, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. What car do you drive, Gov? So they, they'll give you ego, innit? They'll give you all the information. What, what, what engine is it? Shut up. You look like a fucking three litre. <laughs> but I don't, no, I ain't got three litre. I can't afford the insurance. Because mm -hmm. they're normal. They just talk. So they talk, talk, mm -hmm. talk, 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 talk. You look like a blue car, man, me. No, my car ain't blue. Fucking grey, mate. What, graphite? No, not graphite, like light grey, light grey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like fucking ears and earth bubbles. Yeah. No, I ain't got none of that in my yeah. car. What I've got in my car. Mm -hmm. They tell you all the information. So, hello, mate. Yeah, go and have a look in the, in the thing for this colour, that colour, da, 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 get the car. Oh, I've got it, I've got it. All right. See if this fella comes out. Send him a picture of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's in the car. Sweet. See, let me know where he lives. And then, bam, get them take pictures of people coming in and out of the mm -hmm. ass. Yeah, gov, 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 gov. You got a minute? Look, I don't know who you've caused problems. Right, but I'm getting a little whisper on the grapevine that you got a problem coming your way. Now, I can sort with you up because I've got links up. But is that your missus? Is that your kid? Is that your house? Yeah, dangerous play. You're like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Look, if I will come up, yeah, I'm going to go no comment. So don't bother running to anyone. Do you know what I mean? Because this will just get locked down. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know where you got them fucking photos from. You see, I've got my gloves on. My prints ain't on them photos, gov. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to help you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help you. So do what you like. I don't know who you give the up to in here. I don't know who you, who's yeah. you present. Did like you, you ever receive any threats like that, Sam? Yeah. Death threats or anything? Uh, yeah. How would you deal with that? Was it scary? Of course it fuck it. Right, right. Let, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's right. yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly, right. And our job is to fucking get him scared. Listen, listen. I can ask it and I'll hear him I have a family. <laughs> when I were at Forest Bank, I were a single lad. We had uh, we had a we had a lad in there who took a dislike to me. In his time, he'd, he'd been about. Uh, his name was Tommy Beveridge. Okay. Yeah, Scouse lad. Uh, he, he he was up there in his day. Yeah, he took a dislike. Uh, this to at Samworth, uh, get him done. Or he's on phone in the seg to one of his mates. I, I want him done in. Yeah, I've done that to a number one governor in Belmarsh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> so at my SO's there, I says, you're going to let him say that? He, he, he's seen his ass him. I will say this, Marvin, that lad would not block four or five months, dirty protest and that. By the time he left the block, went to a wing and then come back to the block, me and him got on. You know, I didn't bring him no phones in. I didn't give him no, just talk reasonable. It does happen. Now he does this. Most this. most people aren't like Marvin, though. They don't have that pull. The Cat A unit, they're dangerous people. In the 80s, for the public, so they can understand, it might be a mafia and the IRA. So they've got money, you know, they can threaten people. Um, it, it's, it's scary Insumat shit for normal people. Networks. Yeah. Insurmountable networks. That's yeah, what it of course is. it is. Then, so what you got to say is they read all the intelligence stuff, all the reports. So they get inside information that is beyond reputation. Do you understand? So they're mm -hmm. getting, and when they're reading it from an, a, an official place of sort of authority, they take it seriously. So when they read someone's page 16, for argument's sake, they don't look at the page 16 and think, I don't believe that, fuck that. They think, shut up. Because that page 16 is telling them exactly what that person is capable of doing, what he's prepared to do, what he's gonna do if you do the opposite of that. So then sometimes you get officers who think, I don't give a fuck, and they come and try And then basically, I'm one of them cunts. I say, what, you ain't read my page 16? Because I tell them, mate, wind your neck in, otherwise I'm going to punch you in your face. Do you understand me? It's called something else now, but yeah. it is like... Did intel. you ever feel intimidated by the cons? Of course you... F right. Of course you do. You would. It's... Who it's, do you think, see, like, when the Mufti, Mufti mob come, did you ever think they're going to kill me? But this is the thing, the Mufti could Because kill you are a fucking they, 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 menace they to can, society. They can, they can, they can. And it's easy for them to do it. And then what they do, yeah, this is the mad thing. When they, because when, they, they'll always asphyxiate you, right? When you die with the Mufti, it'll always be too much pressure on your chest, too much pressure on your neck and you die, right? So they'll just hang you. Do you know what I mean? They've done it to loads of fucking villains. They just hang them. Do you know what I mean? Put on, but what they do is, what is it? They put a, a, a thing around their neck <laughs> put a finger around the door handle and then just leave, we'll go out the door. Just come out the door. They come out the door, they'll, like, how they do it is, get a kid, put them against the door, get the rope, round the handle, pull the handle till the door shuts, shut the door. And that's it. And then when the person comes, opens the door, opens it, he'll fall on his face. And then they'll think, what's happened? Oh, he's killed himself. And that's how they get away with it. 
That's heavy. No, they, 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 yeah. they kill people in prison. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. This is why, run about body cams and cameras. For me, body cams, right? It had killed dynamic security relationships you have with people. Because how you talk to people isn't necessarily PC. So if me and Marvin had a relationship, yeah, and I knew he's kicking up, Marvin, come on, get behind your fucking door. A governor sees that. They don't want that language. It's a tough place, prison, right? It's okay. There's, there's people now that believe, it, me, if I was still an officer, uh, Mr. Herbert, how are you? May I come in and search your cell? He's fucking like this. <laughs> fucking... Gonna have it. Yeah. Like he does. Good impression, do you like that? <laughs> no, he's giving it that. What am I gonna do? Then I'm gonna see my ass and go away and I'm not searching his cell. It's a tough environment, yeah. Mm -hmm. The brutality that was 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, if they're not careful, will return. You know, because this this what's happening in the world now, the 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 virus is covered a lot of things up in prison service. It's flat on its ass. It's going back 23 hours bang up. I'm not bothered what anyone says. There might be odd nick that's still good. But like during this virus, prisons have been locked up 22, 23, some 24 hours a day. No, 23 and a half hours. Right, 23 and a half. 23 and they, a half they hours. They do not have the staff in. They do not have the quality of staff. And they can't retain the staff to get back to... If you go back to 212, strange ways... 213 prison report. Probably it was the outgoing prison inspector. He says, probably best report ever on a prison. Yeah? Staff prison relationships. Self harm. People feel safe. That's both staff and prisoners. Probably the best report he'd ever done. Can the, I just interrupt there? Yeah, of course right. you can. And now, so you said 2012, 2013. That was when I was in there, right? Oh, yeah, of course right, it was. Right. Now, I'm going to tell you now. Yeah? Walking along that landing. Being in that jail that had the best report ever, yeah, made me turn my way, my, 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 myself away from crime. Because I'm looking at all the villains, right? And I'm thinking, how, like, what are, you, what are you doing, mate? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to get in a, a 12. What? You was in Nick's a week ago. How are you going to get a 12? How do you know you're going to get a 12? Oh, I, took a, I, I made an uh, indication of guilty in the police station to get 50% off my sentence. I was like, say that again? I will, I've made an early indication in the police station that I'm going to go guilty. And because I've done that, I'm getting 50% of my thing. I said, but what about your evidence? You might go home. I ain't taking a chance. Say that again? So you just took six years without no evidence on a conspiracy? Are you fucking mad? He's like, nah, nah. I was like, wow. And that was all I was hearing every day. And I just got to the point, I, I just had to say to people, do you know what, you fucking cunts? Don't speak to me. I don't want to speak to none of you people. And I'm looking at them thinking, wow, everyone's gone mad. It's gone mad, like, why? Fuck. What chance have you got? If all these people are making deals in the police station to get 50% off, what are they going to do if we get nicked together and there's no out? Bruv, this mindset's fucked. They're yeah. full of snitches, grasses, and... Yeah, ah, wow, it's definitely... I can't be in it. Is there a lot of the cons snitches in there? Come on, be honest. Use? No, no, be honest. Be honest. Right. I, I, be, no, 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 please, be honest. No, of course. They're all I, fucking at it. I am honest. It's become really prevalent. Right, I left. Right, percentage. Percentage of prisoners snitching and being sneaks. On each other. Yeah. A lot more than it used to be. Way 50%? I, I can't, 70%? I can't quantify it. All I can tell you is, I know, I know people now who were in conspiracies and that, and mysteriously, people have got off who was the ringleader. There was, a, there was a big one when they did the documentary in 211 in Strange Ways, 350 million, I think it were coke they were importing, yeah? The main man walked free. His brother got 23 years. Some yeah? time. All the others got big sense. He walked free. Yeah. So it has become more prevalent. And this, what Marvin's on about the sentencing, I've known lads, right, quite definitely, who were innocent, who've taken a three or four year because they were shit scared of running a trial and getting a 10 or a That's 12. What I'm saying, and I couldn't they, be involved uh, in that. And I'm looking at these fucking people and I'm thinking, I'm a villain. What the fuck are these people? Because I hadn't actually turned my life around at that stage. It was that, it was that nicking, that bit of sentencing, and what am I going to do with the rest of my life? While I'm on that sentence, while I'm on that, not sentence, while I'm on the remand, right? And then when I come out 2013, because I never turned my life around 100% until 2015, so I'm still in it. 
Do you know what I'm saying? I'm still in it. So I'm still got that mindset, you fucking rats. Like, you're, you're grassing yourself up, you fucking idiot. And I'm thinking, wow, is this what the villains are going to be? And these are people, these are people, this is what in my head, these are people that I'm going to be sending graph to. How the fuck can I send you graph when you're going to belly up the first innings? Wow, nah, mate, I can't be in there. I'm thinking, Lots what the fuck? No right, so can we go back to Strange Ways? Yeah. Go on. 213. Honest, yeah, um, you might have had some bother, you might not have got on with everyone. From your point of view, because I, I enjoyed my job at that time, right? Um, I, people misunderstand when they say a jail's tough for me, it's just a regime, so people know where they're at. Yep. You know, outside that regime, you know, nothing's going to happen or whatever, and good relationships. Me, and I'm not just saying this, you know what I'm like, James. The job for me were getting on with people, the interactions every day, yeah? You just come across as a busy member to me. So you like that oh, job because it, like, it was just like, it was informative to him. It was like thousands, interesting. Thousands, 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 yeah. thousands of interactions it. on K-Wing, your mate, thousands of interactions every day. You're opening people up, talk, 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 yeah, talk. Yeah. That's the that's worst what You can see that's the personality jail, you got. The you worst jail for me was K-Wing, summer, short of staff, banged up, boredom. And people get frustrated. Are we getting exercise, kicking doors, kicking off? I fucking hated it, mate. Hated See, in that it. thing, he talks about the page 16, and you know... Well, it's, it's, got, it's, 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 it's like an in. intel. Did you ever have a piece of paper that's, when you read it and you knew somebody was going to be right, weak? Listen, did you ever pray on them to listen, go, he could be a mole for us? For no, no, let me tell you now, let me tell you. On K-Wing, yeah, I didn't look at people's files. If Marvin, come on. I don't, I don't know Marvin. I don't know nothing about him. I didn't need to. If I had to do a parole report or something for Marvin, which I did now and again, you know, I'd have a look who he were. I, I made a point. I made a point. Any screw I spoke to, I said, do me a favour, right? Because I, 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 I'll, I'll be honest. I'll say, do me a favour, cunt, yeah? Go and have a look at my pay 16 before you say one more word to me. I was going to smash your fucking face in. Did you ever feel bullied? Um, I felt the intention of bullying, because what it is is... Because they're a, uh, uh, an organisation, right, and they've got to enforce rules and regulations, mm. they have to be bullies to us because we're naughty. So you always felt like, whenever I turned out of prison, it was like, right, you've got to make not just an impact for the inmates, you've got to let the screws know, mate, yeah? Don't be fucking with me because I ain't normal. I'm not sitting down doing nothing. I'm not doing as I'm fucking told. I'm smoking my weed. I'm drinking my alcohol and I'm getting a fucking phone. And if you've got a problem with that, yeah, then we're going to have a problem. Simple. So I was just, I've, I've done everything. I had everything and I've created everything in prison and they was the enemy and I wasn't. And everything I wanted, I had to get. And I tried my hardest to get everything and they were the enemy and they was the people who was preventing me from living my life. All right, I'm in prison. I'm doing a bit of bird, but I want to have a fucking drink. So I'm having a fucking drink. I'm not in prison to be like, prison is my punishment. And it's what people, this is the mindset I had, right? Being incarcerated is your punishment. You're not supposed to be punished in prison. Yeah. That's an illegal act. They're not allowed to <clears throat> keep things away from you. You're still entitled to every human right you're entitled to as a human being on this planet in prison but they manipulate the human rights with rules and regulations of a certain establishment. So I never played that, I was a human being. And if I want to drink, I'm going to drink. If I want to smoke, I'm going to smoke. If you try to prevent me from doing that, I'm going to fuck you up. And that's how I was. How does that make you feel though? Is that no short weak weakness from the prison officers for somebody right, listen, to come in and put Listen, their foot listen, down? listen, listen. I need to say this during this podcast as well. I will tell you now, because it's all right talking like this and you think everyone's bad. I work with some fantastic people, not not big people, not brutal people. There's people now who left job who were fantastic prison officers. You know, they helped people, did things for people. Amazing, yeah. You do get bands. But no, listen, in, in strange ways, I'll, I'll give you this, I'll, gi I'll give you this, right? Two officers, there was only, no, two officers. There was two male officers and a female fucking SO, I think it was, and they were fucking vile, vile, vile. Mr. Man and his little sidekick. Um, apparently, I put a contract out on his sidekick to get him lying down in the jail, which was a load of bollocks. Um, to get him what? Killed or shot oh, right. or hurt. Yeah. Because basically what happened was, in strange ways, I, I, I don't want privileges. I don't want enhance. I don't want nothing, 
right? I want to yeah. be in my cell, I want to smoke my puff, I want to do what I'm doing. So all I was doing was finding ways to get my puff in the, in the jail, right? Yep. So I had, my, I had no bed, I had a mattress on the floor, no niceness, no, all I had was my photos of my family, right? My photos of my family, my, my, um, my canteen in bags, yeah, or on the shelf, on the, on the windowsill, and my mattress, that was it. I didn't want nothing else in my cell. No cabinets, no telly, no nothing. When I woke up myself, I threw it all on the landing, right? Now these two screws, the screws used to come in my cell, look at my photos, right? So one day I've come back and I've clocked him looking at my photos. So I walked, I said, what the fuck are you doing? He said, what? I said, what the fuck are you doing? Search my cell, you scumbag, looking at my photos like they're there for you. They're not there for you. They're for me, they're my memories, you fucking rat bag. Do the fucking cell. He's like, you talk to me like that for? I said, what do you mean why am I talking? Cl close the door. I said, what do you mean why? You fucking squeak. They're my foes. That's my miss. That's my fucking family, you horrible cunt. You fucking nonce. What are you looking at my pictures for? Do your job. Search my cell. Your job is not to look at my fucking photos, you little mug. Now hurry up and fuck off. So he's done what he's done because he's in my cell on his own. Was, was your, what, basic mistake there. You don't fucking do that. You don't go in a cell on your own. Why? He'll be doing LB. Why? For that reason. The other thing is, what if Marvin, I'm in a cell with him, comes out, he's touched me bollocks. What do I do? There's me and him in a cell. Yeah, but you, it's, you it's put the in compromising it's the LBBs that, they're, they're Yeah, doing they it. are. Well, well, how he used to do them on K-Wing, you'd, you'd tag team. So I'd be there, see him do that, come out, I'd go in there, and we did it like that. That, mm. you do not leave... Had he dropped the bolt, shot the bolt? I don't know what he'd done. I don't, no, what? I mean, could you shut the door fully? No, no, no. no, no, no right, no, so he had yeah, shot the bolt. Yeah, he shot what the does bolt. that mean? It, it just means so putting the door, so the lock on. Shut the door. So Marvin can't, can't shut the, the door. door. Keep him in there. They have privacy ah, locks. Yeah, yeah. When, the cell, when the cell's not locked, Marvin can shut his door, and it has like a mm. yale. But my key overrides it. So if he wanted privacy, Sunday afternoon, he could just go in his cell, put privacy lock on. Yeah. And other than an officer, no one's coming through his door. Yeah. Did, then, did you ever cross paths in strange ways? I recognised his face when yeah, I saw face. him straight away. Mm -hmm. Because face. you were in for the Dale Cregan thing and you yeah. were working there with Dale Cregan. What did you think of Dale Cregan? Uh, me, bully. Uh, he was a weak person, you know. I'm I'm going to say this now because again this is this is important. Obviously, the staff have got no liking. We had, or strange ways before my time, had a member of staff who was to do with what happened. Yeah, so they, you know, it was a bad thing. He killed two young girls. He killed the other two guys, and he killed two young girls. Right, defenseless, Cowardly. defenseless, defenseless. He handed himself in. Yeah. 99% of prisoners thought he was a scumbag. Right, listen, I'm going to interject there. Do you know why I got nicked for that? No. What did you get nicked for, Marvin? Um, a conspiracy to murder first. Right, okay. And then assisting the offender. Right. Because, see the phone he walked into the police station on? Yeah. That was my mate's dad's phone. He, 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 when he handed he, himself in? Yeah, he, what he'd done, he's gone to someone... Right, this is what's happened. Right, there's a guy in... There's an informant a paid police informant that lives in Hearn Bay. Right? Yep. He lives on number five. I can't remember the name of the street. Right? So he lives at number five. My pal lives at number four. Coincidence, right? That they live next yeah, to yeah. each other. Coincidence, right? So my pal was having a, 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 a farewell meet, um, party for his brother who's going into the army three years, going abroad, um, Iraq or Iran or something like that. And they was giving a farewell party for him on the 19th of this month. I was going down there to do that. So that was my person in Herm Bay, right? Now, I didn't know that fucking Dale Cregan was seeing people in Herm Bay, right? Where is um, it that, Marvin? I'm not... Down near Dover. Right, okay. Down near Dover. So basically, what's happened was, Dale Cregan's got a relationship with his geezer, giving him food or drugs or whatever, and his geezer owes him 25 grand. I didn't know this at all. Anyway, what happened, um, Dale Cregan sent Jermaine Ward to look for me in Liverpool. And they found out where, because my cousin took Jermaine to one of my cousin's friend's houses one time in Liverpool without me knowing. Because Liverpool is sacred, so my family is sacred. No one knows where my family lives in Liverpool. But my cousin took Jermaine round one of the people's houses to get a drawer one day. And Jermaine's remembered where this house was. So he's come back there to look for me. I'm in my cousin's house around the corner, just by chance, right? But it's not chance, all written. So I'm around my cousin's house having a chat. All of a sudden the phone's gone. Someone's here looking for Marvin. What? What do you mean someone's looking for me? What, who is it? Who is it? Ask me who is it? Jermaine. So I thought, Jermaine, that's Lee. Lee, 
that's dope. That's Dave. They're those people. Because I met Lee Kelly through a guy called Dave Campbell. Me and Lee and his family come really close after. Like I said, I know Lee Kelly. Yeah, yeah. But we come really close after all this. But, um, well, before all this. Um, but basically, what's happened, um, when Jermaine's turned up, I've instantly thought, well, hold on. Dave owes me 1.6 million quid, right? He's trying to have me iron that. Jermaine's turned up here. They're trying to iron me out. What's that mean? Kill you? Kill me, yeah. They're trying to get me somewhere to kill me. They've got to be. Why is Jermaine turned up out of the blue? When Jermaine was linked to Lee, right? So Lee, Jermaine and Dale, all friends with Dave. So I'm thinking, wow, they're, they're sending someone to kill me. So I flopped on them and it was only Jermaine there. Um, so I spoke to him and he said, oh, I think he wants to speak to her. I said, for what? He said, oh, something's happened. So I said, what is it that's happened? He said, oh, we'll cut the shootings, cut this, cut that. I won't really pay attention. I said, well, look, if he wants to see me, I'm going to Dover next week or the week after or the week. I can't remember the date, but I'll give him the date, the 19th, we're going to Dover. I've got to go over there. Da, da, da. Cut a very long story short. I met him, um, had a conversation with him. And then he said, I said to him, what's the problem, Dal? He said, oh, I need your help. I said, to do what? He said, getting out of the country. So I was like, is this after the two short shoots? The two shorts, then? yeah, the two shorts, right? So the dad, the dad um, Dave yeah. and um, Mark yeah. short yeah. have been yeah. killed, yeah. right? So now he needs to get out of the country. I was like, mate, do you know what? I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I said, what, what's happened with these two people anyway? Because obviously it weren't that. I don't watch the news and I'm not on the radio and I, I'm not a normal person at that stage of my life. So I'm not looking for bulletins. I'm not listening to the radio. I, I've never really heard what was going on in Manchester, right? So then basically when he said to me, oh yeah, well I shot a couple of geese, I was like, yeah, and? He said, oh, but the police, and then he went, hand grenades. I was like, say that again? He was like, hand grenades. I said, what about hand grenades? He was like, I, I threw a couple of hand grenades. I was like, uh, who? He was like, oh, well, one of the gaff and one of the, I said, are you fucking mad? I said, you know you're a terrorist now, isn't it? He was like, what? I said, do you realize you're a terrorist now? Like that's a terrorist act, bro. Like that's not healthy. Why have you come to me? Like, and then I've sort of got paranoid thinking, do you know what? I said, do you know what? Come round here, come round here. Because we were standing on the beach, right? So I said, come round here, come round here. So I've took him into my mate's house. Little did I know that his mate lived next door to my mate. I didn't know that, right? So then basically, I've said to him, look, you're mad. You ain't going nowhere. Fucking hand yourselves in or do something because you're fucked, right? Um, go and see Dave, want to get out of the country. I can't get involved. In I said, but what I'd advise you to do is let Jermaine go. Because Jermaine's, a, it's a liberty what you're doing. He's going to go and get a lump of bird. He ain't done fuck all wrong. You're not just bullying him. Do you know what I mean? Let him go. They was like, well, I said, no, you need to let him go. And when he goes, you need to tell the police that they've bullied you, mate. And they've made you do this. You don't want to be here, do you? You know you're going to get 30 years for this. He's like, I just want to go home. I said, let him go. They said, well, go on then. I said, well, you come with me and go and hand yourself in. But when he handed himself in, he couldn't tell the police what I told him. I told them, just tell them they kidnapped you. They told you that they're going to kill you if they don't do nothing. If you don't do nothing, they're going to shoot your family. You're under duress, you've done it. But he couldn't do it. So he got 36 years, the poor cunt. Did he? Yeah, he got 36 oh, years. Yeah, they all got 30, 36 30 years. plus, 30 I felt so, plus. I felt sorry for his, his mum. Anyway, because when they've turned up in Liverpool, I'm just thinking that. So then basically what Dow's done, yeah, after I've said, look, I can't help you, I've took Jermaine with me, he's gone and handed him in. Um, Dow's obviously gone back down to Herne Bay to speak to this geezer about his money. Right, because I've got this. Is what got me out of the case because I've got the agreed facts in the case. Right, and they said the, the the person couldn't be named, couldn't be prosecuted, and couldn't be blah blah blah. But he confirmed that he owed Dale Cregan twenty five grand. And Dale Cregan was there um, to collect this money. Right, so he didn't have to go to this because uh, the police's evidence was that we're in the back end of nowhere, and he had no reason to be in Herne Bay but to be with Marvin Herbert, and that was why they arrested me. Right, so when one when he's finished with his meeting there, he's thought, oh, let me knock on the door. Have you can you get a message tomorrow for me? Oh, we ain't seen him. We ain't seen him. Because my mate says to me, you know your mate not round here. And I was like, for what? So he was just asking him to get older. I said, just don't give him no nothing. He was like, all right, sweet. But what he'd done, he'd nicked my mate's phone off the side, right? Nicked the phone off the side. And all right, yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. Now with hindsight, now I'm thinking he must have nicked the phone to see if my name is in the contacts. Do you know what I'm saying, sir? But he's nicked the phone anyway, and that's the phone he handed himself in in the police station. So when you think about intentions, right? Now, you're going to go and hand yourself in for two murders on police officers. You've already been given the information months ago, right, that you're a terrorist and you're going to get ironed out on site or you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison. You've been told that, right, by me. I've told him that, right? You've got a phone in your pocket that you know you've taken from my mate's ass. 
You know you've took it. You know you've took it from my. You know you've took it from my mate's ass. You fucking know you took it from my mate's ass. So you feel the best thing to do is make a phone call to somebody who knows I don't fucking know while you're walking into the police station to hand yourself in for two murders. Well, four murders now. Oh, four, oh, yeah, yeah. Why would you go into the police station with the phone that connects me to you? Is that set up? Of course, man. From day one, that's what I've said all along and I've said it to the police. It's a fucking liberty. And you could have got 36 years through that. I could have got more than 36 years because I would have been up as a major player. I would have been... You could have got all the life like Krieg and never getting watch out. Watch this, right? Because I was trying to... The, 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 the extradition order said that I was the boss of an organisation that ordered that ordered the assassination of two people. So I wasn't getting arrested, yeah, for the police officers. I was getting arrested for Dave and um, Mark Short, right? And then... And then the police officers happened, I think. I'm not really sure of the chronological order. But yeah, when they when the, the extradition order was the for the, no, it was four murders. I was co-conspirator to four murders. And their evidence was between the first and the ninth of May, yeah, I came back to England and orchestrated a plan to assassinate Dave and Mark Shaw. That's what they said, right? And it wasn't true. It was none of it was true. It was all bollocks, all come out in the case, all come out in the paperwork. Um, the moral of that conversation. What was the moral of that conversation then? Or well, just speaking about him being in prison. Yeah. About what, what he was like? like, about being like a coward yeah. and that. So Dale, yeah, Dale has purposefully, from my perspective, set you up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wants to drag he me. He set into lots it. of people up, didn't he? No, listen, do you know how many people got nicked? The, the reason why I got Fucking the hat is the amount of people that got nicked that was coming in. I found the statement about the grass. Because I'm reading everyone's paperwork and I found this statement. What? He's a paid informant. He can't be named, can't be um, prosecuted and, and can't be extradited or can't be something for, um, was it he can't be named, can't be prosecuted, can't be named, can't be charged and cannot be prosecuted, right? And he's saying that Dale Cregan, he owed Dale Cregan money and da 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 da. So all the evidence I had exonerated me because it proved that Dale Cregan was a fucking no good narcissist cunt that come there, tried to get out Coward. of the way. Yeah. Coward. It, how, it, did you, how do you, how does a uh, prison officers treat people like that when they first come in? You've got to just treat them like a normal... Don't treat them like that. You get a percentage. You get a percentage it'll do him, but... It, yeah. it's, it's wicked gloves. I'll tell you for why. The, the pros, Everyone's giving it. Every, everybody, right, everybody, police and everyone, wants him to go to court. Yeah. So straight away... Don't just talk about Krieg, and that's even the nonsense. They all get kid-gloved. The, the, They're all kid-gloved. The high-profile ones... Listen, they just get looked after. They get uh, pampered like fucking... They get everything. Do they, yeah? yeah high-profile ones. They do, mate. High-profile ones. And, they, and there's only different. a small percentage of these cunts that dig them out. Do you know what I mean? Like, even the nonsense, the sickest nonsense get treated like fucking royalty. Why is that? Because they've got to protect them to get them to court. They don't want them to kill themselves, and they don't want them to be that's killed. It. That's it. Crown you know prosecute. I mean? Can you imagine? Let's take Mark Bridger. I fucking hated him. You know, mm -hmm. took that young lass and killed that horrible, horrible bastard. I hate him. End of. Imagine if he'd have killed himself in strange ways. Yeah, fucking hell. It'd have been, it'd have been everywhere. Press, no brainer. And like you know, Marvin but says, fucking these good. 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 Well, yeah. Good. Yeah. Let them kill themselves. This is what I don't yeah. get. Why the fuck are you protecting these That's scumbags? The system. No. Oh. Listen, listen, listen. Right, right. There's a system. Yeah. Right, but the system works with its cogs. The cogs control the system. So if the cogs are not prepared to do what they have to do to make the machinery work better, then it's the cogs' fucking responsibility. Put the cunt down. Like you're quick enough to kill fucking powerful inmates that fucking drive you mad for years they've killed about four of my pals in prison do you know what I mean I'm not saying he has specifically but the fucking system have killed them and they put it behind fucking bullshit and say no he hung himself or he killed him he cut his wrist no they don't mate they don't the fucking screws do it the screws do it my pal would never have killed himself why it's like it's like if you heard me kill it imagine you hearing yeah. I've killed myself Marvin got nicked last week but he killed himself you're not gonna say do you know what 
he couldn't have handled it. He must have thought his world would have been over. His life's fucked. Mm. You know that ain't going to be me. You're going to think, do you know what? There's any fighting fucking chance Marvin would have, mate. He's going to look for it. He ain't going to kill himself. There's certain people you know won't kill themselves. One of my pals killed himself, right? And I'd never believed prior to him killing himself, he would have killed himself. But after he killed himself, everything in his life made sense to me. And I realised why he killed himself. Because Outside? Yeah, outside, outside. He comes to me one day and he said to me, I the penny never dropped at this specific moment in time, right? But after he killed himself, it dropped. He comes to me one day, he said, do you know what it is with you, Marv? I said, what is that, John? He said, I try every day, 100%, to act like the man you are naturally. And it's fucking hard, it does my head in. How are you, you? How do you do this shit? How don't it affect you? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You fucking lunatic. And I never, it never twigged, it never twigged. I never paid attention to it. I never, I never embraced it, I never engaged with it. I just said, you're a fucking idiot. What do you mean, fucking how do I do it? You idiot, but just do what we do, innit, you fucking prick. And I went on my business. Two months later, he killed himself. Jumped in front of a fucking train. Do you know what I mean? Like, rest his soul, Junior McDonough, Hugh McDonough. Like, and I could never see it prior to that, but with that happening, I sort of, you see, you see vulnerabilities in people now. I see the vulnerability in people now. Obviously, now I'm a, a mature dad, soon to be grandfather. Congratulations. No, no, it's not, I, I, I put me <laughs> like that, because I want one, I want to be a granddad. Not, my yeah, my yeah. kids are not spitting them out, Jan. Mm -hmm. Give me the ump, man. <laughs> Fucking but, imagine Marvis, you're granddad. Imagine being a granddad. granddad. In his huge, Christmas man. jumper. Uh, yeah. He's matured now, man. I'm hoping it, he matures even more in 20 oh, well, years, well, man. Well, well, well. No, I'm going uh, to be an exceptional granddad, yeah. man. What was it like, been away for your first ever Christmas, can you remember, in prison? See, this is the thing. With me, yeah, I just it's... made the most of it. I made the most of it. I made the most of it. Was it sad? Um, yeah, but I've done it. Do you know what? Or do you just get the blinkers on and pretend it's fine? You get out of your nut, get drunk, have a laugh, have a row with the enemy. They're the cunt, so <laughs> fuck them. Do you know what I mean? Christmas Day, you come out and you're waiting for an argument. Say one word, cunt. Say one word. Yeah? I want to go block for New Year. I'll see, I'll see New Year here with a bang. Yeah? You fucking rat. And, but Christmas, they don't want to fight. They don't want to get a busted nose. They don't want it. Yeah. They don't want it. So I could get away with murder. Like, Yeah. How was it for yourself? We're working, taking yourself away from the shit. family you know, Christmas people, Day. Right, cliche. People can say, you know, uh, you can go home at end of day. Do you know what? Every Christmas was miserable. I chose to work Christmas Day. The reason I did that, our lasses, mum and dad, we got there for Christmas. If you're off Christmas Day and in Boxing Day, because it's a shit job and there's shit shifts, yeah? The thing is, you know, nobody wants to be there Christmas Day. Prisoners, pretty much. Uh, didn't come across many Marvins. Like fuck. <laughs> like fuck. <laughs> no, the, the thing was, a lot of people are down. They want a phone call. Mm -hmm. They want a scran. Very solemn, you know. It is a fucking sad time. Um, so many suicides in that in Christmas Day. Many, yeah. Uh, not so much. Not so much. Um, everyone's everyone's too busy grafting right. to make themselves feel good. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I can only speak the wings I worked on when we were on healthcare. We tried as best when we were on K wing. What's your fucking problem? <laughs> <laughs> we tried as best, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's it's a very solemn time. We nearly had a, a, there was potential for a couple of riots at Strange Ways, and I'll tell you for why. I'll tell you for why. One was a scran, and the other were phone calls. So I had a lad, a young lad, just just wait a minute, Marvin, you've had plenty of air time. <laughs> Fuck off and wait. <laughs> I was always upset, I've got a Christmas yeah, story. Well, to just hang on a minute, mate. <laughs> So happy one, mine are happy stories. Yeah, yeah mine, are, mine, had happy <laughs> mine had happy endings. So we're on K-Wing, right? There's a young lad, young lad, got young missus, young kid. And from when he's landed, he were on two's landing with me and uh, Nobby Nobbler, that's what I call him in book. Fantastic fucking officer. Every day, Mr. Samworth, my phone, my phone, my phone. He wanted credit. Somebody sent him a postal order. Yeah. So he might have mate. So I'd already had a word with your mate, Mr. Burt who was a fantastic manager, big shouty guy, but he was brilliant. Yeah. I said, listen, this kid Christmas Day, if his money ain't landed, yeah, can we give him a phone call? Oh, fuck it now, you know. But he says, yeah, two minutes, your responsibility. You soft off Yorkshire twat. That's what I used to get called all the time, which I were good with. So 
Let me tell you how mail works. Because again, th this is a little thing, this, but people don't realise it's that simple. Mail room. It's strange ways. Off sides of this, yeah? Correspondence. Correspondence are the people who check mail. You know, so no one's putting a kilo of weed in Marvin's letter and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> so mail goes in a room. They run drugs, dogs by it. But what happens is it, it's not organised. There's no rotor. Yeah, so during the week in a normal, a normal up to Christmas, it might be three bags. They'll get through three bags of mail a day. There might be three or four staff there checking it, yeah? Christmas, I've seen mail room rammed, yeah? So the mail that they're checking is the mail that's come today because the bag with the post loader for the kid in is at the back. There's 60 bags in there, yeah? So that's how it works, that's simple. He ain't had mail. His mate who's got mail today only got sent yesterday. That's how it works. It's simple as that. There's no yeah. organisation. Can officers fuck about with people's mail at Christmas just I know they people, like them? We'll, we'll they talk, do, we'll, they we'll, do. Right, yes, they do. Listen, we'll yeah. talk about that in a minute. I'm about to stick after, on a couple of them. You, yeah. You're having a good Christmas story and I'm going to take him back to K-Wing 213. Mm -hmm. So, this day, yeah, Christmas fucking day, so it's solemn. So we've unlocked, people aren't coming I out. I was in there. I was in there Christmas. I was in there Christmas. I went back. The last one? Uh, yeah, like 2013 yeah, Christmas. Last year. Right, yeah. we're talking about 252627 now. Uh, so bastard. I take preference. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, so this lad comes walking down landing with a letter, with a postal order, right? So I, I know what's happened. Literally, they can't have checked the mail because what happens with postal orders? Writing a little book, postal order for Smith or Herbert or Marvin, or whatever. Yeah, psycho. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, screws won't allow to call me Marvin. you got to call me Herbert. Why? Because you can't be personal with Marv. Who are you calling Marvin, you <laughs> cunt? Call me that again, I'll smash right. your feet in. <laughs> Don't on, sorry. Go on, go on. So this lad comes down, so I thought, right. And then another lad, Mr. Samworth, Mr. Samworth, Mr. Samworth. They're all walking out landing with fucking post loaders, mate. None of post loads have been taken out. All these lads want Christmas Day is a scran, yeah, and to phone the family. That's it. Yeah. They'll go in the cell. They might have a shower. They might have a game of pool. It's a quiet day. It's a solemn day. It's shit. Nobody wants to be there. We ended up with over 200 post loaders. 200 on wing. Some people got four letters with four post loads. You know, lads that had money sent in regular. Yeah. So I said to Bertie Bassett, he's like fucking pulling his hair out. Well, not literally, because he didn't have none. Looked like a bit of a monk, but he was a nice lad. So I says, what are we going to do? He says, right, get on to pin phones. Pin phone system in jail. You know, you can get credit on the SO had a pin, which is a number I can put in. So if your mum's ill or dying in hospital or, you know, Marvin, whatever, whatever's going on, I can put this pin in and you can have a call and we're paying for it. Yeah? So he says to me, Bertie Bassett, put 100 quid on. OSG at other end, that's not a prison officer. It's like someone who does the sort of clerical jobs with it. They assist prison officers. It's a job that needs doing. So this knob end on other end, I said, put us 100. You're not getting no fucking credit on your pin phones Christmas Day. And he puts the phone down on me. Now I've got... 100 lads who want to phone a family who've got no money on their account, yeah? Bertie Bassett got involved, we marches down, there's a senior officer and this guy, this knob end, giving it the big licks. In incidentally, this, this senior officer, yeah, is a cock. He's worked with prisoners for about two months of his career, he's been in 20 years, he's an absolute bell end. He doesn't know how to talk to staff and certainly, you know, Marvin a bit <laughs> banging him out, getting him one of them. Bertie Bassett, ragged him up colds, get credit on. So he gets back on wing, yeah? So time's gone on a bit now, it's like dinner. After dinner, I've told them all, two or three minutes each, there's a lot of you. So after dinner, we unlocked orderly queues, and it's not usually orderly, but pin phones like, and they all got a call, everybody. That's all they wanted. Nice and organized, they were all settled, boom, got the scran. So that's that sorted, yeah? That, could have been potentially a riot, that. Yeah? There were lads on that wing. That's all they want to do. Really solemn day. Speak to the family. Now I'm going to come to the legendary fish curry that I talk about in my book that got so many people at Strange Ways upset. 
Cleaning officer. What's a cleaning officer, Marvin? What do you mean? What's a cleaning officer in prison? Come on, you know what a cleaning officer is. No? Come on. Have you ever been a cleaner in prison? Um, well, you are you. You no, have, aren't you? No, I tell you what. No, no, with, you're not I, taking I, up no. the story. You've been a cleaner, aren't you? I've been. I'll ask you after. No, no, I'll tell you, I'll I told you, you all, the, all the hard bastards and nut jobs have been cleaners at some point. No, what you, what is, I, was, I, I, was, I, was, I was the administrator for the cleaners. So basically, I'd, <laughs> I'd get people cleaners' jobs. But I was. Oh! Right, so I was, I, I was one of them people that was. I was just that much of a handful. Yeah? That they give you a little job. That I used to create jobs for other people. I say, gov, 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 gov. Mate, he's been banged up. He's like, he's, he's probably busted. Can you let him out do a bit of cleaning? Let him do the showers, please. Like they go, yeah. So I was a cleaner. I had a job, but I used to get other people out of their cells to do the jobs that I was supposed to do, so I could cook for the food boat that I had. Mm -hmm. That was how I. That's how we yeah. used to work. Fish curry, right? Go on. Nobody wants fish curry in prison. Was it Christmas? Yeah, Christmas. Especially day. not Christmas yeah, Day. Fucking Christmas Day. So the day before, as a cleaning officer, you look after the savory where you serve food to people. Yeah. And you look after the fish cleaners. Fish curry? Yeah, Christmas? Just, exactly. See, yeah. now, see now what I'm, I'm saying? I'm getting angry. No, I'm just full, I'm just full. Did you yeah. talk about Christmas yeah. dinner? Are you going to let me finish this? <laughs> so, excellent that, Marvin. You know, you can have your fiver after. That's what, that's what I wanted, that reaction. reaction. So, as cleaning officer, I would order the food for the following day. Christmas Eve, I'd been off. So, two pens, yeah, as we called him. He was a nice lad. He was on my course. I like him. He's a postman now. And I wish him all the well. But sometimes he was a bit of a dick. Yeah. So he was a shit screw. Shit mm -hmm. screw. It was, it was shit just. Screw. It was just. It, was, it, was, it wasn't quite out for Good the job. Post we, office, we called man. him two pens. Back in the day, prisoners like Marvin, all of them had a file. Yeah. So I very rarely wrote prisoners up. If I had a bit of a, you know, he's a bit pissed off or whatever, you'd just let it go. Two pens would write everything down. Everything. That's why they called him two pens. You know, he's. It was a bit of a job's worth. Anyway, Christmas Day, he's already said it, right? He has ordered K-Wing 200 prisoners. So me, I'd have ordered 160 Christmas dinners. Yeah. You order some halal meals for your Muslims, maybe 30, maybe some butty packs. Some people will only eat butties in jail. It's mad. I know yeah? that. Yeah, yeah. So it's about 11 o'clock. Donna in the kitchen. Donna, let me tell you about Donna. Lovely lass. Good grafter. Now and again from K-Wing, we used to work in kitchens. When I say work in kitchens, I work cooking, you'd go and supervise. And they used to ask you to sit in the stores at the back. And then she might ask me to just get the lads to empty the bins or whatever. I'd do anything for anybody, me. She was a nice lass. Somebody once said to me, they messaged me on social media, they were very rude. They said, Donna wouldn't have done this. She wouldn't give you the steam off her piss. And the type of officer he was, I, I pretty much said, well, you're a fucking prick. You know, if you teach people right. So it's 11 o'clock, so I've phoned Donna. What is my order? So two pens ordered the day before. 160 fish curry. Christmas day, 160 fish curry. Minging at the best of times. So I goes to Bertie Bassett, who's on again. He went, fucking space. He says, you better get sorted. I've got all the cleaners, all the servery workers. Yeah. Every cell on K-Wing, got to tell everyone, two pens... I'm not hiding people away. He, he's done this and it's no fucking joke. He's incidentally off now for about five days. So I phoned Donna, 160. I said, Donna, what are you doing? It's Christmas Day. She went, I've, I've seen it. I, I didn't understand it. I said, you can't send me 160 fish curry. So the cleaners, we sent them out and the server. I said, go to every cell, tell them crack. At the moment, everyone's getting fish curry. Yeah. Tell them I'm going to do what I can. Yeah, you know, we've been had off here. Now, one of the officers who got really upset about this story, and he said it never happened, whether it means the riot never happened, because if Marvin had come out on the survey and had have offered him fish curry, he'd have been down the block after, you know, taking a few people out, maybe. Yeah. If I'd have went down there and there was a... a, a, a <laughs> what? what? I would have just flipped the whole fucking shit up. There you go. I would have just flipped it up. I would have died. Like, what? You're fucking... I would, I would have done it, but they wouldn't have been able to serve another person after me that food. There I would you have go. Has that, has that prison officer done something like that because of people at Marvin? Though? The, the, that prison officer is absolutely fucking stupid. He's not thought... 
He's probably thought that he he's funny. He has thought, surely. Well, listen, let, let, let me tell you now. Let me tell you. Fucking fish he's, curry. Yeah, he's he's, he's not even a chicken curry. Oh, yeah. It's a fish curry. Now, you got to understand. <laughs> 90% of people from Manchester don't eat fish. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's from a chippy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no, 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 right. The older people... Like the mums, the dads, the nans and granddads, they'd have fish because there was an ostentatious yeah. kind of meal back in the day, mm -hmm. fish and chips. Coming out of the war, the 70s, the 80s, fish and chips was big, yeah? You go to the chip shop, people eat fish and chips. But predominantly in Manchester, like, I'm, I'm not, I can, I can only say what I see. So when I've been around Manchester, they love unhealthy food. They love junk food. So a fish curry, fish curry. In Manchester, our Christmas dinner. Can I, can I have it back now? Can I have it back? <laughs> yeah, right, happening. so listen. So I'm fish downstairs. Curry. I'm downstairs. Other than the SO, yeah? It would have been off. Nobody has been downstairs. Yeah, one or two staff knew what were happening. The officer who got really upset about this story, when he said it never happened, I don't know whether he means the fish curry, you know, because he, he was upset. Um, oh, no. Can I just interrupt? Did they get Christmas dinner anyway? Did they get Christmas dinner? He's going to let me finish the story. That's where going. <laughs> yeah? He's upstairs having a brew because he's on an early shift. He's going home. The fucking stress. I was stressed to fuck. Yeah, but I told him, go and tell him two pens has ordered this. Donna, I said, you can't do that, love. I'll do what I can. Right? Now I've got 200 prisoners here. So, food come. Yeah? I've, I've had lads off K-Wing tell me who were on at this time and they've told me what they had in the book. I got it wrong. We did have fried eggs now and again when they were short of food. They send fried eggs. You don't get fried eggs in prison, no. do you? But what she did, she sent everything that was left over from Christmas dinner she possibly could. So there might have been a bit of meat, uh, you know, a bit of turkey. When I say turkey... It's like polythene, you can see yeah, through it. It's like, it's like the, the cut chicken, <laughs> the turkey, that like you get in a packet. Yeah, process, yeah, process, yeah. right? But, you know, there might have been some... Or a left-legged chicken. Yeah. A left-legged oh, chicken. that's the fucking... Right, listen. Anyway, she sent what she could. There was shit loads of food. The fish curry weren't half bad. A lot of lads took that. The plates were full. Everyone who come down, I told them, yeah, we made sure that the lads come out last because we used to rotate... How we fed people, obviously we 200. Everybody was happy. Everybody left with plates of food. Donna did us proud, yeah. But that potentially, you know, it's all right looking now. That is what I would have been facing. The the lads and lasses upstairs, although some of them supportive, were out of it. It it could have been a fucking riot that mate. As easy. If the screws ever spit or pissing somebody's dinner if you didn't leave them. I wouldn't do that. No, but did it happen? If it hadn't happened in front of me, I, ca I can't say. Yeah. However, you know, I I'm going to take you back again. The fact that we're talking about bad shit. Two pens fucked me right. I'll t I haven't finished it. <laughs> Bertie Bassett, yeah, he saw him before me. Because of our shifts, I didn't see him for two weeks. But Bertie Bassett told him in no uncertain terms that when he saw me, if he made a laugh or joke about it or whatever, and I fucking filled him in, yeah, then it was his own fault because it could have caused a fucking riot. Do people... So it wasn't a riot? No. Marvin, they all... I'm waiting food. for the fucking riot, mate. <laughs> I was <laughs> wondering what... <laughs> this is waiting for the story. <laughs> this, this, that, that was... He saved the riot. Oh, he saved the riot. Yeah. That mm. fucking phone call, but lots of people got upset because it didn't happen. How many Christmases have you gave up your life All to, to work in prison? Uh, 15, two in kids' home and four in forensics. Kids? One, youngster, yeah. So, I mean, that's, do, 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 this, this is the thing that I don't get, I never used to get, right? Why would you take a job like that? Right, Marvin. But when I got into it, started down that route, I was a single lad. But I understand, that, mate. So I understand that. I yeah. under, look, don't get me... I'm, I'm not confused. No, I'm no, right. I'm, I'm going to tell the, you. The prison officers usually... This is from my sort of... Um, what's it called? When you're... Observation. All right. So normally what happens is this, right? You've got three forms of prison officers. Right? <laughs> Just the three, go on. No, 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 this is my perspective. No, right? no, that's so, cool. Right, so you've got, cool. you got the kids from school that have been bullied, right? And they want to get their own back. 
So they become prison officers, right? On the naughty kids. And then you've got kids that wanted to be um, police officers. Then you've got the kids that have left the army. So there's three different types of men, right? The army, it'd be like the army man, right? I, I would have booked him as someone who'd been in the army because the army people talk to people. They want to get involved. They don't look down their nose at people, yeah? The bullies, yeah, the ones who've been bullied, they hate the hard nuts. So they instigate stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, so there's three different forms of prison officers that you've got to be wary of. Do you know what I mean? But I never had a problem with any officer because they're doing a job. I just had a problem with the way they treated me. I felt I owned the place. I felt I owned the space. And I felt I was entitled to do what I wanted. And if you never let me do what I wanted, then you was my enemy personally. And that was... Just yeah, Marvin Urban, yeah, that was yeah, how I was made, yeah. you know what I'm saying, So why did you take the job? I just don't understand. It sounds like a fucking right. tough job, no, no, Marv. I, I could not imagine. I, I, I'm going to tell, you, on, I'm gonna tell you honest now, right? I, I won't mention my daughter's name. I won't embarrass her if she ever sees mm -hmm. this. And I'll ask Amy, right? Love her to bits. So what I have realised now, why did I take the job? At the time, I've been in engineering 23 years. Uh, before I left, I was bouncing. I was teaching aromatherapy in the community, Yeah. And I was doing massage, not that sort of massage. I've got we've it, had, got it, yeah, we've got had it. this before. All right. Mm -hmm. You remember, Dave. Don't throw me yeah. under the bus. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm doing three jobs and I, I'm feeling, I've done 23 years in engineering. Say, if you walked in as my masseuse, but I've been thinking, what the <laughs> fuck have you been eating? You, you haven't seen me in the uh, <laughs> Sunday best. You know, you a bit of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss. I'm doing turning up with a load of lycra on, so yeah. with a massage. <laughs> like, Listen, don't <laughs> knock it, mate. Don't knock it. <laughs> <laughs> no gimp mass, though. Um, so you don't I'm, need one. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be Christmas come on that's why we're laughing man come on man right it's so all good, it's all I'm, at, I'm at a loss Santa's so, pause I, I wanted something different have you ever been like I wanted to challenge myself I wanted to do something different I obviously had thoughts about it I've told you when I was at Forest Bank waiting for my job interview outside walls I was shit myself I'll be honest you know how long um, did you start prison officer for uh, three years Forest Bank, 11 at Strange Ways, 14. Kids home. Fuck. Kids home, two years in between. Right, so I'm going to ask you a question now. I'm going to ask you a simple question. I want yeah. to answer it within three seconds, right? Do you think you wasted your opportunities in life being a prison officer? No, because my right. nan, my nan always said to me, better to regret having done something than regret not having done it. Yeah. I, I sp spoke on the way down, yeah? Them experience have got me where I am now. But you could yeah. ask you the same. Did you regret? But going it, back, being Marvin, a, you, do you do you feel as if you've wasted your life being in prison? Yeah. Do you know I what I mean? I why why I, did you want to be a criminal? Because I didn't know any better, mm -hmm. right? But I actually believe I've wasted my whole entire adult childhood, adolescence, and adult life. I've wasted it all because of what I was doing it for. Right? I was doing what I was doing to be successful. Right? Because I never had any other avenues and other options. But because of my experiences because of my prison sentences and because of my sort of environment, I've actually had enough of it all. Tiring. It's just, it's draining. Like, I don't want to get emotional, right? Okay. But it's... No, don't, you'll set me off. Um, no, this is the thing. Sometimes I've felt enough. it coming, you know, you feel it in your nose. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... The, the mad thing about, because it's Christmas, I'm going to... Right, because I don't want to cry Christmas. But what you got to understand is the mad thing about it is the... The pain that you got, like the, the Christmases, the holidays, the, the birthdays, like, it's okay me saying, yeah, we done it, we lived it, we breathed it, we said we made fun of it, right? I was gonna tell you the, the, the story about the, the biggest, the best Christmas dinner we've ever had, right? So, when you reflect back on the pain and the damage you've caused, it's not, I'm talking about what we got through. And it was easy getting through things. It was happy getting through things. It was happy smoking drugs. It was happy drinking. It was happy getting what you wanted, juggling, grafting, making money. It was happy doing that because that was dealing with that situation. But what we were creating was the trauma to deal with later, which we wasn't aware of. So because I've gone through all that life trying to become successful, I've devastated my kids my family, my mum, my dad, my aunties. All right, they was all at it, but the devastation that I could, I could have caused, or the devastation I did cause, 
where I didn't have to. Imagine if I'd have become a professor, I would have become a multi-billionaire, I would have got all my family out of everything. If I'd have become straight, legitimate early on and made waves in the business world, I would have been a millionaire by the time I was 21, guaranteed. Do you understand? I know that. I would have been so successful being legitimate, but I made the wrong choices. So when I look back, I just resent the fact that I wasn't educated enough to make the right choices. Now, I don't regret what I've been through, right? Because of where I'm going and what I've achieved, right? But I regret not having a proper life. I regret like not having nice Christmases, not being there for my kids. You know, like all them things you regret, all that sort of stuff, but. <sighs> Marvin, do you know what, mate? You asked me the question about, you know, why would you have kids? I'll tell you now. Obviously, I could go home at day. I worked 60, 70 hours a week at Strange Ways pretty much every week for 11 years, yeah? I'm just now, our, our lass, Amy, bless her, she suffered prison widow, yeah? I was not nice when I come home. I always said I left it at gate, yeah? You don't. She didn't have, she, she spent lots of time on her own with my daughter, yeah? My daughter, I didn't see for five, six years. This she is went, what I couldn't understand. Well, why would you fucking do that? It needs to put Be food because at the all. time you don't see it, no, mate. Like you don't. Like, like, same, the same way we never see being criminals. You don't see it being fucking no, you officers. Don't. Yeah. Listen, let this me tell you now. So he's got a legit job. No, yeah. But, 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 but what I'm saying it's the same principle. Mm -hmm. It is. It's the same principle. You don't see it with your ignorance. So because I never see, I, I thought I was right. I thought I was being good. I thought I was being successful. I thought I was being all of the above. I didn't realise of the trauma that I was. Like, I didn't realise that I've got to speak to my kids now. I didn't realise I'm gonna to have to explain all. I've had to tell my kids I'm sorry that I ruined your life. Yeah. I'm, I'm responsible for what you've been through. I'm sorry I haven't been there. I'm sorry I haven't been the perfect dad. I can't make that time back or make it up, but I can make a difference now. So if you want to work with me, work with me. If you don't want to work with me, there's nothing I can do about that. Mm. But I'm here, I'm your dad, and I love you more yeah. than anything. But what I don't understand is why you'd actually choose to go and get a job that keeps you away from your family for so long. I chose my life, right, yeah. because of circumstance, right? My you fell was, into it, really, didn't no, you? No, no, I never fell into it. I was born into it. My mum well, was... That, that's what I mean. It was like... I was born into it. So, so my mum was a... a my mum was a very, my mum was a hustler. She was a female hustler that hustled her way through. She worked as well as hustled, but she was a hustler. And my dad was a drug dealer and a gambler. And my mum hustled, graft, she stole, we thieved, we smoked drugs together. So my mum was, my mum was like my best mate growing up. Do you know what I'm saying, Joe? Mold of the story, what was he talking about? It's just gone. You're talking about what you sort of fell into and why yeah. I would choose yeah, so a job like so that. Basically, Growing up as a kid, I was shoplifting with my mum at four or five years of age. Like, I was smoking drugs with my mum at 13, 14 years of age. Do you understand? So I didn't have any normal upbringing. I didn't have any normal understanding of life. My understanding of life was what I was doing. So when my dad burnt my hand over the fire oh, yeah, and tough. beat me, yeah, for stealing a, 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 a Wrigley Spearmint gum, three packets of Wrigley Spearmint gum and a star bar. I couldn't understand it. And this is where the hatred come from for my dad, because I'm thinking, you're burning my hand. I'm only doing what my mum does. My mum doing what my mum. In my head, I was just fucking confused. I do this with my mum. Why are you doing this? But you're my dad. Why are you doing that? Like, at that, that age, I, you're just confused. And then it must be, he, my mum's right, he must hate me. Because now I'm getting information. Your dad don't love you. He don't like you. He likes his horse. He likes his horse. And that's all he wants. Da, da, da. So then when my dad does these sort of things, whereas in retrospective now, nah, I see my dad don't want me to end up like my mum. My dad don't want me to end up like my yeah. cousins. My dad. So he's trying to prevent this stuff from happening. Tough love. Yeah. But he just didn't know how to do it. And that's what I've realised now in, with older age. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the damage we cause. And we, I fell into that life, but I never chose to come out of it. I never chose to come out of it. I chose to live it. Yeah. Whereas, mm, I'll tell you what, I need a new job. I'll tell you what. Ah, that looks all right. What's that? I've got to work 365 days in the prison. I think I'm going to do that. Like, I just don't understand it. Like, like so <sighs> when, when, with hindsight now, I started to understand people. So people that, He's a caring person. Mm -hmm. So the reason why you take a job in a prison is to help, help people. people. 
right? I don't see that because everything's got to be a benefit because of the brain, the program that my brain's got, yeah? Everything we do, we've got to benefit from. So yeah. what are you going to benefit from working in prison? You're going to be away from your family all the time. You've got to be crooked. If you're not crooked, what is it? I don't see that empathy or helping mechanism because helping people is making money with them. Helping people ain't changing their mind or supporting them. That ain't where my brain is. My help is money. My help is products. My help is weapons. Do you understand? Because that's the mindset yeah. I used to have. So when you think, well, what are you, what are you getting this job for? It's just shit yeah. wages. You're away from your family. Wow. But somebody has to do it in fair play to you for doing it, no, big it, man. Listen, it's, mate, how does it feel that Sam is a good guy and I've known him for a long time now that his Christmas Day is coming in and, and if you're on one and he has to go home at Christmas night, how does that make you feel knowing that he's actually just out there to do a job? Because there is good prison officers I'll out just, there as listen, well. I invite them all to my parties. Come and have a drink. Up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Come and have a drink. We're having a drink. Do you know what I mean? If you yeah. fuck the party up, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I, I, right, so I'll give you the, uh, the, the Christmas dinner. Right, so we bring a bit of happiness to the mm. situation. <laughs> bit so, of calm. Yeah, yeah. A bit of calm, bit of love, bit of love. Right? So we're in, mm. and this is an officer helping out people in prison. So this officer, he got arrested with uh, eight bottles of, eight one and a half litre bottles of vodka, one kilo of cannabis resin, two mobile phones, um, I think it was, well, he never actually got charged with the MDMA, heroin and crack because apparently someone chopped the one of the bars in half, dug out the, ha the hole and then filled the hole and then stuck the bar back together. So they might not have found it. I think they did find it, but they might have given him a squeeze. But um, that was how the parcels used to come in before. So you had the class A's, everything. So some Christmas day we got, um, Dinner, I think, how many people? I think 18 people we've done Christmas dinner for this day. So basically what is, coming up to Christmas day, I'm asking all the chaps on the wing, because you can cook, you've got a kitchen what, at the what, top. What Nick Marvin, just to explain, because a lot of people, okay, so like in strange I'm, ways, I'm kitchens a, right, we're, food. We're, 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 in, we're, in, we're in Swellside, which is a category B trainer, stroke. It's like, it's, 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 it's like where you're going to go if you're going to be a Cat A prisoner or where you go when you're coming down from being a Cat A prisoner. So it's like the, the turning point for your categorisation within the prison system. After after swell side, you're either going dispersal, which is all Cat A, or you're going C Cat or D Cat. Do you know what I mean? So it's like a, it's a, it's a weird prison. Like it's, it's got the A Cat prisoners in there that are come off the book or they're going to get styled up and get put on the book, either or either, but it's just a wild environment. It's just crazy, like the stabbings. I've been, I think there have been a couple of killings in there. Like our geezer I know got stabbed straight through the neck. Other people I know been plunged up. Now like, it's just a, a crazy jail, right? So basically, I was a very violent individual. So when I was in prison, I had certain rules on the wing. Da, da, da. So anyway, cut a long story short. Um, this officer got nicked with the puff, but prior, prior to the New Year's, because that was 2006, I think it was, he got arrested coming through the gate on the 6th of January. So the Christmas party that we'd had prior was, uh, how do I remember it? Right, how do we remember it? So I had, uh, we had, believe it or not, we had roast chicken, a leg of lamb, Joint of beef, a turkey, chicken, leg of lamb, roast beef, a turkey. And then in between one bit of meat, there'd be roast potatoes. In between the other bit of meat, there'd be broccoli. And then other greens all the way down there. Like we had, I think, everyone knows the tables that you get in prison. So you get a table that sits six people on it, right? So then we had, I think, six of them tables lined up in the TV room, right? So you've got a long table with uh, food, like you had meat, potato, veg, meat, potato, veg, meat, potato, veg, meat, potato, veg, and then all the desserts cooked up. There was people in there that cooked um, cakes and uh, so we had all these spread up. We had um, each table, each chair had a little bucket next to it because we had, I think it was 12 litres of ooch, <laughs> right? So everyone around the dinner, right, was drinking ooch and then the heads of the table were drinking vodka. 
because obviously vodka is a little bit too much to share without without the whole prison, right? So we're drinking vodka, a couple of people drinking, and we've had our dinner. So we're in there all day, um, eating, celebrating. A couple of screws come in, said, do you want to have something to eat? They're like, nah. But we're in there just, just eating, drinking, having a great time. Like, you can't... You can't imagine it, you just got to be there, do you know what I mean? But it was like a banquet, it was like a proper table full of food, all the most sensible people on the wing sitting around. And do you know what? The comments are going to talk for themselves because you'll see. Because people are going to be saying, bruv, I'm telling you, I heard about it. Because my food boat was called the Titanic in Swellside. And when I got moved out, that's when they said, oh, the Titanic sunk. Like, that was a running joke when I left the jail because I got ghosted out there because Martin Nelson, the officer, and if you look him up on the... Um, in the internet, you'll see he got arrested, got two and a half years for bringing a kilo, 998 grams of cannabis, a few phones and stuff like that. He was the number one governor's son. Two and a half years, that all? Yeah. Yeah, but he's a fucking prison officer, isn't it? It's a prison officer, mate. So they're, they're going to look after their own, isn't it? He was the governor, the number one governor's son. He pleaded guilty, made give him all the information he needed to give him. So, I mean, he threw me to the wall, said I've been threatening him, photos of his family, threatening, I intimidated him, I threw him, I threatened him. But I paid him fifteen hundred pound a month. Like, don't make sense, does it? No. Why am I going to threaten you but pay you fifteen hundred pound a month? Did you ever feel resentful that this? Uh, did you like, even like the word screws, prison officer? Like me, I'm not asked. Yeah. See when like, the screws were going home at Christmas night and that. Did you ever feel resentful that the bastards like oh, no. fucking bastards? Say the morning, cunt. Say the morning, cunt. Did you ever? Did you ever <laughs> feel like? Did you ever feel like? Did you ever feel sorry for anyone when you were leaving in Christmas? If he, he says would, no, I'd say I think No, he's no, a they were he people would. I felt sorry for. What? Yeah, they were. I was going to say, I thought you said, I thought you said they weren't. No, no, I was going to say, you're mad. Can't you see him? Can't you, know, can't you hear him talk? All he cares about is people. Mm -hmm. which, which is what fucked me up. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, the, the, I, I'll tell you what, I, I think there is no prison officer who leaves that job without a fucked head. Some, you know, all time, it's still going to get to them. Me, you, well... You know when you say hindsight, man, I don't like that word. So reflection now, I can look now, 2020, back. It's four years ago since I got finished, yeah? Um, what I'm going to do, my plan now, it's about my family, my daughter, my missus, Amy. Put yeah. it all back. I missed You're doing six what I'm years. Doing, man. I missed six man, years of my daughter. Yeah. Right, I'm not there. I'm out of house at six. I'm in at half nine, ten. She's in bed. I know. I was on the other side of the road, did mate. You, did you banged up in Yorkshire? Yeah. I was banged yeah. up. I yeah. was banged up, mate. But, but, we this, were there to give up. It, it to is. Give up. It is. It is. <laughs> it's crazy, it is. isn't it? Yeah. And it, the, the, the trauma he causes his kids, his missus, everything. It's but all he's the still same. Got to survive and put food on the table. Yeah, but you know what? He's, you and think, he's doing it legit. You think, you, you think that is. Do you the get the thing is, right, engineering. I did long hours in engineering. I did shit jobs. But you know what? I'm not thinking about a fucking milling machine all night. Yeah? I take the money, you go out on piss, you do whatever. That that job is just draining. You, you don't think. I, I used to say it. I've said it loads of times. I can see myself saying it. And people I work with said it. Oh, you know, I can do this job. I, I leave it at the gate. I don't take it home. I bring a book out. Ask our last to, to, to do four pages, array four, saying how it was. And I fucking did take it home. It was obvious. You know, she'd spend all day, pick daughter up, get her in bed, cook me a nice meal, you know, make herself look nice, bottle of wine, and I'd walk in, stinking as shit. Stinking in prison. That yeah. smell, wasn't it? It's just on sat all night with fucking face on. So how's it, once you finished, how's it really affected you mentally to be working in the prison system? Uh, me? I, right, obviously I did the book. So I finished 216, I got finished. I were on sick 12 months. I weren't treated well by the prison. Right, can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course you can. Do you feel freer now? Do you feel free, kind of? Only this year. Okay. 2020. Well, see what I mean? 20, only this year, Marvin. Um, so four years, it took the transition for you to feel Yeah, it's not going to... Listen, mate. Mad, isn't it? Yeah. Listen. Two hours, maybe three hours, I sleep at night. If I have a drink, I, I tell you what I do now, I drop off. I can go to bed and drop off. Well, and that's the trauma of being One, a prison two. officer. Yeah, of course it is. That's it, yeah. yeah. Listen, you know, really, this is what people don't realise about fucking prison, right? I was insane. That's why I got Are you siding it. with us? No, no, what I'm saying, you know, it's just reality, no. isn't it? So 
I was insane. I was literally insane. Like medically certified insane. Everyone that come across me said I was mad, lunatic, sociopath, logopath, all these fucking paths. I was every fucking thing, right? That's why I sort of made, that's why I wasn't, that's why I'm not affected sort of emotionally by everything I've been through because I was insane when I was doing it. I, I don't even remember, I don't remember 90% of the stuff I've done. Like people said to me, Marv, do you remember doing this? I was like, shut up, I've never done that. I said, Marv, you did, mate. I was like, when? Like, boom, boom, boom. Like there's millions of things that I do not remember because I was in my limbic state of mind when I'd done it. Did you block all that out? You don't block it. Listen, what happens when your brain functions, right? Whenever you, whenever you get a bit of information, right? The blood flows straight to your limbic system straight away. Now, depending on how you're programmed and how you're educated will determine how you react or respond. So from a working class environment, we will react to either defend our, our, ourselves or to protect ourselves. Whereas in a middle class environment, they digest the information to see the benefit. If there's no benefit, they don't react. If there's a benefit, they'll respond. Whereas we're not programmed the same way. So our reactive stuff is instant, boom. So I was brought up in a very violent, volatile environment and I grew with all that. So my normal was being who I was. And then because that normal sort of transcended into an insanity, that was just my, under, that was my normal, it was my normal. It was my normal, so me attacking, me kicking, me, that voice in your head, right? When someone says, I'll just smash him in the face. And people think, oh, I'm going to do that because I'll get nicked. No, the never, difference is, I, no, let me I finish, might let me think finish, that and it'd stay in your head. I never, no, I never had that voice to say, I'm going to get nicked. I used to hear the voice, I used to smash him in the mouth. No, that's what I'm saying, Marvin. Well, I'll, just, I'll just react. Most I'm, normal what? people yeah. would think, like, I'd think, I've, I've been in a situation, yeah, with somebody who's kicking off and I'm thinking, right, preemptive strike, it's, it's written into prison rules, CNR. If, if I'm face to face with Marvin, I think he's going to attack me. You can get a punch in. I don't know anyone's ever done that because they're fearful of being out at job for assault. And also, I've got, in my head, I've got something stopping me. But and obviously, so, there's lads with me because I'm one of them aggressive you, people. That, yeah, that, that you know, it's how they... They'll get away with that. How many Christmases have you gave up in prison? 12. Fuck maybe sake, 15, man. maybe more. So you have basically gave up the same amount of Christmases? Yeah. I, I haven't had working. a Christmas since two, 2000 millennia. What was your hardest Christmas away? See, I don't even remember it's the Christmas. The it's just, it's just, you don't remember them because all you're busy doing is making sure you got your parcel. Just to forget it, kind of block you it don't, out. Listen, listen, man. You smoke weed every day. You have a drink every other day, every other, or the weekend you get lagging drunk, right? So it's just continue that same pattern. Do you know what I mean? That's all it is. So you got to just try to make your pattern on the street the same as in the street. It's just... How I, how I basically dealt with prison was this. It's a, what's it called? A, uh, ah, it's like a, you know, you've got climates and little climates. I forgot what the name of it now, fuck. But it's like, it's like a, you got society, then you've got a micro society, that's it. Mm -hmm. So prison is just a micro society. It's a smaller version of street, but condensed into a very small space. So I just want to be able to live. So I'm in prison, so I've got to live. I want to live the best, the same way I do on the air. So how do I live the best? I've got to have alcohol, I need drugs, I need drink, I need bent screws, I need, I need it. So that's what I focus on when I'm in prison. So I don't focus on anything else but that. So I have no other memories of prison <laughs> but try to graft and who I grafted with and what I got and where it went. That was all I do. And when it got disrupted, yeah, then basically what happened, I was in the mount. Seems we're a prison officer here. I'm in the man. Um, there's a loads of kilos of puff getting thrown over the wall. So um, they ended up taking me off the wing for the. I was the leader of the drug culture within the prison. So then they got me down the block. The governor told me he's going to keep me down the block over Christmas. So I said, "Well, you're not." He said, "Well, I am." I said, "Well, you're not." He said, "I am." I said, "Okay, we'll see." So then fun and games start now because he doesn't realise that I know the law about prison. So basically, what we've done. I got a load of kids to come over and they started firing bars, bars of puff over the fence, right? So they're buying loads of puff over the fence. Whether it comes in or not, doesn't matter. It cost me peanuts. 
So I'm paying for it to come, they're throwing it over. So what I had to do, I had to put a new fence out. So I've got two fences, so now I have to put a third fence up to stop people catapulting the gear over. So then what I started doing, I started getting, because they got me down the block, I started getting all the people in the block, like basically, I get all the people in the block, like maybe seven or eight people down the block. So what, what's their drug of choice? Is it puff, skag, crack? What is it? It's usually puff and skag, right? So puff and skag, I have in abundance. So not a problem. Yeah, mate, I need you to do me a favor, right? I'm gonna give you half a gram of smack and an eight for puff if you flood your cell. Yeah? They say, all right, sweet. So how do I flood it? So he said, right, you got wet loads of tissue. And then from the lock, from the lock on the door, <laughs> he's laughing, from the lock on the door, down the, to the floor, across the door and up, right? You block it with wet tissue, right? And then you've got to rip all the pipes off the wall and just leave it, yeah? If you do that for me, I'll give you half, I'll give you a, a, um, half a gram or a gram of bran and an eighth of puff. And they, all of them said, yeah, because everyone's a smackhead. Well, 90% of the people in jail are smackheads. But there's only 10% that are not smackheads and 2% that are successful and good people. Anyway, so everyone buys into it and you say, I'll give you a bit of puff first, yeah? Here's a bit of puff, have a bit of puff, right? Here's your bit of gear, here's your bit of gear. Is it all done? Yeah. So all the cells are done, so all the cells are done. So now, I used to throw shit at the screws, but I wouldn't, I will not mind them wiping shit all over myself, but what I'd do is when they come down, the governor's got to open your door, you all right, governor? I'd cat or cow pat, I call it, because he's a fap. So when you fight, it's just like a lump of shit just either hits his face, mm. hits his thing, or hits the door, and you go, good out, out of it, you cunt. Go on out of it, or straight on. That was the thing I used to do. When it's coming, uh, straight on, cunt. No, my door, you all right, Herbert? Mm. Straight on, cunt. If I didn't want to shit him up, though, depending on, on whatever yeah. screw it was. So basically, we got the, the, I'm shitting the screw up. I've got the, um, all the cells blocked up. So the night now, the, there's adjudications in the morning, right? So. The day before, I'd say to the governor, you're going to let me go back on the wing for Christmas? He said, no, but you're not going back on the wing. I said, you know what? I want to cost you a fortune. Watch. Yeah? I want to cost you a fortune. Because I'm on medical hold, right? They can't move me, right? Because I'm on medical hold for an operation. So they can't just ghost me. It's paid, and they have to pay a mad fine for that. So they're not going to do something that's going to cost them money. So I'm on medical hold. So now I've got more gear coming over the fence. Boom, 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 boom. The jails are having problems. I'm getting people beaten up, people cut. I'm getting people robbed. I'm paying, I'm telling everybody, do this for me, do that for me. And they're doing it, right? And it's happening. The jail's bubbling like nutty, right? All of a sudden, I'm down the block. I've got everyone on the dirty protest. I've got every day, every day, every time they open the door, they get wiped off their feet. Because as they open the door, all the water's built up in the cell. So when they open the door, it just takes them off their feet. Then the whole seg is soaked, yeah? And it ain't just one cell. It ain't just two cells. I just three cells. It's five, six, seven cells that are just flooded. They can't do the adjudications. The governor's going mad. Do you know what I mean? How was that to handle? Odd. We had... Uh, Did you have shit in that floor? Forest, yeah? Forest Bank. We had uh, Tommy Beveridge when he was down there. Uh, about six young offenders, 18, 21 year old. Seven of them on dirty protest. Yep. You know, you'd walk in, smell, and just... <laughs> yeah, just floor you. <laughs> yeah, this seg were just uh, <laughs> a long wing, cells either side. IMB, uh, mm. Independent Monitoring Board, people yep. used to volunteer to go in prison. I remember when we got it on dirty protest, three lasses walked on, they used to sign in, one was signing in, one was sick, the other were nearly, that were it, they were gone. For a fortnight, we never saw nobody, no governor, no nothing. How was it for like Harold? Called it concerted indiscipline. How was it for like Harold Chapman and that when he came in? Uh, he, he was there when I went there. Royalty. There. Royalty. Again, they're they, they fearful that, of people like that. They, so they get yeah. fucking treated like royalty about Bevere, but they get treated like royalty, mate. Because we were she, on a discussion listen, coming down. Royalty. Yeah. Trust me. They get things you don't even get on the fucking canteen, mate. Is that true? Yeah, yeah it is, mate. Let, let me tell you, a certain lord who's not a lord anymore, yeah, who writes lots of books about prison, that's all we say about him, probably sue you or whatever. I remember going to a prison where this geezer you know, ex-politician had been. And one of the guys there says, come and have a look at this cell. So I went and had a look at this cell, walked in. I, I can't remember exactly now, this is 2003. Yeah, I walked in, I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it was something else. It was still a cell in, you know, structure. I said, yeah, this geezer. 
he writes lots of books about prison. Yeah. His food wasn't the food that no. prisoners were getting. No, mate. He got treated. But I'll tell you, one guy who did do his time, um, his name's going to go out of my head now. I knew it would. Joey Barton, your mate. That yeah. Was, so, like Marvin's saying, when he come in, he was a footballer, he was still a footballer, he was given special privilege, he was given a job, he was given the Jim Audley's job. Yeah, he had to be kept fit. You know, he was in for assault or whatever. But that was out of the prison's control. That come from above. Whoever, whether it was football club, an MP, I don't know. But Joey Barton didn't do any proper time. He was treated like a celebrity yeah, rather than oh, royalty. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Even some of the big nonces are treated like that. Sex offenders, everything. And he, he said, give me the fucking ump. It gives me the ump. They get protected like, what? They're ruining kids' lives. They're, and you're treating me like a... And that, 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 was, that, was a that was something that really kept a fire alive in my belly for prison officers, the, the, the authority. Not everyday prison officers, but the people in the authority. The, like, I said, Gov, let, let me slip in there. Let me slip in there. And they're like, oh, but we can't, we can't. So you fucking... Well, you're Do you know what he's just said there, Marvin? Right, that is a valid point. He probably didn't realise we were making it. Such as myself, landing screws, officers, whatever you want to call us, guards, the people at the bottom of the chain, yeah... You know, they don't dictate how the job's done. That's done by yeah, other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, you're just done. You're That's done by other people. They're the ones that get all the shit, crap, bollocks. You're what I call the turnkey. Yes, yeah. I got yeah. you. <laughs> turnkey! Open me door. <laughs> and that was it. I was, I was making them feel like that every day, screws. I'm hey, not, cunt! Open my door. He must have been a fucking pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not letting him get away with this. He said, right, <laughs> 2013 Strange Ways, to be fair to you, Talked about three officers he didn't get on with. To be fair to me, what was it like though? Forget them three. Yeah. Tell me what. Tell people what strange ways were like. 2013. It was like a big kids home. If I'm being honest. No, you you be honest. Yeah, it, was, it was like a big kids home with loads of confused individuals that didn't even know what they wanted to do. Was that the staff or the prisoners? <laughs> both. <laughs> both. No, but uh, what I must say about what I liked about strange ways. Yeah. It had the old screw mentality. You know, like, you talk to us with respect, we'll treat you with respect. And then you had a, a little percentage of them that was absolute dogs. But on the whole, from the officer's perspective in the prison, it was one of the best prisons I was in uh, throughout my whole entire life in and out of prison. Because the prisoners, yeah, the, the, the officers, although they was officers, they never acted like officers. They acted like normal people. You know, like you, it was so hard. That's what I put it. The, the, uni, the uniform didn't exist with eighty percent of the officers in strange ways. Although they wasn't crooked, right? Because I tried a few times, but they wouldn't have it. They wouldn't have it, right? So there wasn't crooked officers in there, and I did try. I did try, but there ain't no crooked. No, Dynamic I'm, security. This we talk about it a lot, Marvin. Yeah, that staff prisoner relationships. They were really good. Yeah, they yeah are you get good. to know people. You know, and, and that's how it is. And if and everyone was the same then. They weren't all big ass airy screws, were no, they? No, 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 no. Right. Ones. Some of them people you'd be shocked who you come across who you said old school, there were one lad I worked with, he'd been in seven years. I thought he'd been a screw for twenty five years, officer, whatever you want to call him, yeah? Because of, of how he was. Yeah? And and that's how it were back then. But it's it's good to hear it from somebody like Marvin, whose perspective <laughs> It what's, very the worst, good. what's the worst day in the prison system? Is it, is it Christmas Day? Is that the hardest for people? Right, they always say New Year's Eve is a potential to kick off. Item security. Why? It's New Year's Eve, you know. Everybody wants that, don't they? Yeah. You know, there's a bit of door kicking and banging. Christmas period, on the whole, uh, not a lot of incidents and a general feeling of... Yeah. Everyone's you know, at loss, isn't it? Sad. Everyone's at loss, it's mate. Sad. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, sad. You're all the big villains thinking, fuck, my kids are out there. I've got, no, I've got to get... Like, we're concerned about making sure that their Christmas for our families is still on point and hasn't been disrupted, apart from us not being there. Because I never seen myself as not being there as ruining their Christmas, as mad as it sounds, yes. isn't it? Because as long as... In my head, as, as a warped, confused mindset, I believed that my children... Because of the upbringing I had and the, and the abandonment issues I had to face growing up and the materialistic acquisition that I never had growing up, I felt that my kids needed everything I missed out on. 
So me not being there was just another way of me trying to give them what I never had and not realizing the impact that it was having. Mm -hmm. Because I was telling myself, there's nothing right about your kids, son. As long as they've got everything they need, you're good. And all they needed was you. And all they needed was me. They didn't need money, they didn't need Christmas presents, birthday presents. Like, mm -hmm. like my kid, my boys, were thinking, nah, fucking birthday present, Christmas presents. What the fuck? You some sort of a cunt. But I can only appreciate his mindset and try to grow with it rather than ostracise it. Identifying yeah, with yeah. it. How's that affected your partner and kid? A Amy now, bless her. Um, we, we had two Christmases, prison free, two 16. I was fucked in, Ed, mate. That I, was on, I was on sick, <sighs> my head. I, I was like, I, I was just out there. I, re I remember. And he ain't even committed a crime to go through no, that. No, no, no. I, I am sad. I'm on sick. I'm on sick. People think you're sick. on sick. Why are you on the sick? Uh, I got injured. Because of your but, job. But then I went cuckoo. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because you know, is that because of the present Well, this is 216. I'm in the kitchen, Christmas Day. I don't know day. how they look. Do you know what I mean? you got to understand. This is what you've got to understand, right? Now, Prison officer isn't a prisoner. So for me, I'm going through my shit, doing my shit. I don't have to see the people that have cut their wrists. I don't have to see the people that have ate shit. I don't have to see the people that have done these crazy things, like peel their cock off. You know what I mean? Try to glue their fannies up. Like these, like, you don't understand the things that people do in prison when they're going crazy. Do you know what I'm saying? People, I've had people, but this is what I gave done when I was in prison with him, right? In the block, yeah? He chopped his cock off. Right, and you think, ah, chop, how do you chop your cock off? With string. Fucking string, mate. How do you do that? So I'll fucking tell you. All you do, you know when you, when you wrap um, cotton, you know cotton, yeah. and you wrap it around your finger and it goes blue, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you leave that on there, your finger will drop off. Believe it or not, if you get it, stop the blood circulation to your finger, it will actually die and drop of off. It will. Right? And that's what they done. He put a fucking cotton around his cock and it fell off. It just fell off one day. Oh! <laughs> he's come out, he's got you there, and guess what? Look at that. I said, what's that? He said, it's my cock. I was like, how? And he went, look at that. I was like, fuck! Why did he do that? Because he's just lunatics. You'd listen. There's only some fucking lunatics. The like, look. I'm, I was insane to m commit crime, but you got people inside, mate. Yeah, they do some crazy shit that I'm not aware of, but he is. He has Work, to be exposed to I worked to on it. healthcare seven years, didn't I? See, what, like, healthcare. Do you, like, mate, you don't understand what these fucking people have to look at and see and deal with. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't even go healthcare as an inmate. But you, you're putting me in healthcare, you mad. You go in healthcare, there's got a chance you can get knighted off. When you get knighted off in prison, there's a chance you're never getting out. Right? Fuck healthcare. Yeah. What, are you jabbing what was me? healthcare like? Right. First of all, what, it went through a trans transition. I started November 22nd. Now, sad's this. November 22nd, 2008. August 13th, 2015. That's Just when, before Christmas. That's when I come off healthcare. Um, when did you come off healthcare? How many years? Seven years. Near enough. Yeah. Let me tell you now. Um, in the no book, there, there's, some, <laughs> there's some dick on Twitter that's using my book to sort of create a blog. Look at this, writing about this. Let me tell you now. What they don't know is the people I wrote about in there who were anonymous, you know, the geezer with the jacket I used to play pool with, stopped taking his men 10 days later, he's naked, trying to pull his bollocks off, eating shit, rubbing it in his eyes, yeah? Not trying to harm everyone, not taking any meds. I, I, st I know his name. I remember playing pool with him. I remember the day he went to hospital. He went from playing pool with me, having a chat. He had a Fonzie jacket, mental health all his life. All his time in prison, he'd gone to prison, not for crime, because he was mentally unwell. And they get locked up, yeah? 10 days later, you know, he's sticking things up himself. He's bleeding from his backside. I know his name. I played pool. I can still see that. And I can still see him the day he went. And Bradders, my manager, she'll be the same. If I said now, am I talking about bum, it'd be there. So what them people don't realise who are reading that and saying, it's not your story to tell, who the fuck's going to tell his story? If I don't tell it, if I don't say this happens in prison, because he won't, he won't know. Because like Marvin said, it, it was nutted off. But it was bad. And that is just one incident. Hundreds. Hundreds, yeah? Thousands. But the, but the thing thousands. that affected me the most was in incidents was how people were treat staff, how staff 
were trapped with other people. Trapped? Do you mean by treat? Yeah, it's your. No, 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 I'm saying yeah, that. yeah, of no, course, Marvin. You said Listen, something. I thought, hold on, what do you no, mean? No, no, let that? me tell you now. So, right, um, we had a death in custody. That's in the book again. It was horrific. Still see that guy's face. You know, it, it happens. And that's, look, he's only going to work. Right? We choose to be criminals. We choose to break the law. We choose to stab, shoot, and kill. We choose to do that. We, we, we the trauma to us has got to come. But you're going to work to feed your family, to bring up your kids, to pay your bills. Like, why the fuck have you got to see all this shit? Like, this is the things that I just don't understand. Like, and with no support, there's no support. No support, nothing. You're a fucking idiot. Go home. Do you know what stands out about that if day? If you're not back here in the morning, you get in the sack. Mm. That day, I could recount now three hours every single thing. I give a police interview after, because it was death in custody. So we've dealt with this. 12 o'clock, cop come in. He said, I'm sorry for the coroner now. This is an in depth interview. Three and a half, four hours later. So I've dealt with the death in custody. But this isn't about me. There was a young lad. He was an ex squaddy, 26. He wasn't involved in the actual incident. He was on the unit. Yeah. White. He's in shock, that lad. Proper in PTSD. shock. PTSD. PSTD. Well, it, PSTD? It, was, it, was, it was just in shock. There was a fantastic senior officer with him, Kev, if you're still around. Yeah. He got him taken home and he was off two weeks. The bit I'm now remembering, and it'll make my fucking blood boil. <coughs> now, like that, Marvin. There's six staff in office having a fucking brew, laughing and joking, saying, What's up with that twat? Fucking grower set. It's only a fucking con. Bom, bom, bom. Do you know what I mean? That's what got to me how people were treating other people. All this macho image. Yeah. And one of them staff that were in office drinking a brew. Yeah, ridiculing this young lad. Yeah, a month later, I'm in reception. So one at the reception lad says to me, I, I won't mention his name now, um, not out of respect, just because I won't. Yeah, but he said, let's call him Smith, the officer who's ridiculing the lad. He says to me, uh, Who says you, Smith or the lad? No, the lad in reception said, Oh, Smithy had a bit of a bad do. I says, Oh, yeah, what, what's that? He says he found one dead on healthcare. So I'm thinking, Smithy weren't there. Smithy's come on unit after. Yet, he's telling people that he's traumatised because he's found someone. Why? Why would anyone want to tell somebody that they found someone hanging? Yeah? When he was nothing to do with it. It's like, this is, this is the culture. Again, I will go back and tell you, hundreds of people I met in prison... Both sides at door, no bother. 98% of cons, no bother. Some amazing staff. Nobody nobody ever talks about, not me personally, a couple of lives maybe on healthcare, saving lives every day. Nobody mentions that, talks about that. Nobody talks about the good. Everyone wants to hear about the bad. The culture for me was terrible. The macho bollocks, you know, get over yourself and that. A lot of managers and governors had that attitude as well. There must be a lot of goodness in it as well, like he's just touched on there. There must be some good. Of course there is. I'd say 80% of it's good, you know. I think so. This, this yeah. is... The, yeah, it's, only a, it's, it's only a small... Like, look, think of it like this, yeah? Screws used to come to my cell. I got to say, Herbert, 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 Herbert. Like, why? Like, well, why? Like, I don't understand. Like, I want to give you a, I want to give you a decal. I want to send you to this place. I want you to, to get out. Like, you're not going to go home. Don't you care about your family? And I'll be like, eh, eh. and then they'd calm you down and they'd go, like, I was one of the worst criminals ever, but they tried to give me a D, um, a C cat. They sent me to a really good C cat and I fucked up and I was back in within a couple of months. They tried to send me to good jails and I'll just fuck it up. But they do try to help me, like, did you fuck it up for the reason that you thought... I was maybe, just too angry. You, I was just too right, angry. If you get moved up a sea cat, that people might think you were going soft. So no, started. no, it's just, it's just, I was just angry. So I've argued and said, what happens? Um, I left Parkhurst and I went to Coldenly, right? I got to Coldenly and basically he was allowed video sent in at that stage. So I've got all the latest videos. Um, Pulp Fiction was the latest film then. Right? So Love that film. Yeah, Pulp Tavota. Fiction. Yeah, um, all the John Volta films then, all the... Um, all the Quentin Tarantino films there yeah. was. So I had about four or, five, yeah, I had four, four or five films sent in. Right? So in reception, they've opened them, checked them and sent them to the wing. All of a sudden, I've gone down. They're putting it, what's that? No, I've got some videos in it. Put, put one of them videos in. You can't have them, Herbert. 
I was like, what? He said, you can't have them. I said, what do you mean I can't have them? Everyone's getting videos sent in. You can't have them. I said, Gov, don't buy me up. Put the fucking thing on. <laughs> He's gone, oh, but there's a letter here. But you're not allowed to watch your videos. I was like, are you fucking joking with me? He went, nah. I'll be back in a minute. So I've run up to myself, packed all my gear up, done all my gear. Going to the block. Da, 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 da. No, no, no. I thought, yeah, going block, mate. Fuck this. I run downstairs, run in the office. Now they had a, um, a communal video recorder. So when they put the video on here, it went on them three wings. Yeah, we used to have that on K Wings. Yeah, so for I was running it. Yeah, I was running it. Right, the thing, I just smashed the life out of the thing, smashed the screw around the head, and it just kicked off. And then they had to ring a taxi and take me to one of Have you ever had a good Christmas, Marv? Every Christmas has been good. <laughs> <laughs> From what you can remember? No, I've never had it. I've, I've never, have you ever had like a peaceful, nice environment, happy? Yeah. No, do you know what it's, I've, had, I've had everything because I, I don't see the stuff that I've been through as being bad. I just, I've made the most and the happiest time out of everything I've been through. How are you feeling now? Happy. Good. I, I feel good. happy. I, I don't, you look happy, but it's still edge of the seat material, isn't it? It's still... Yeah, people don't, it's, it's, I'm just regurgitating old feelings, old experiences, right? So the passion, I, I can't not be Marvin Herbert. I'm Marvin Herbert. I'm, I'm, I'm who I am. I wear my heart on my sleeve and that's not going to change. What you see is what you get. I am Ron Seal. I am what I say on the tin. And now I'm just dealing with legal products, yeah? Legal opportunities and legal environments, legal networks. I'm not interested in anything criminal, right? I am exactly the same person, but I choose not to be violent and not to be aggressive unless I'm on a podcast explaining aggression yeah, or yeah. reaction. So I'm, I'm I think not, people know you now that you wear your hat and your sleeve and you talk, you do talk with passion, even though some people will be sitting eating a Christmas dinner, shiting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it is. When was the last time you had, have you had a good Christmas in a while? Have you enjoying um, it now the last four years? Right, 216, I, I was mentally unwell, like I said. Uh, I peeled out vegetables, I last come in the kitchen, had a few sherries. This was when I was on sick, yeah? All the vegetables were in the bin, all the peelings on the side. She, she thought I would, I'd done it to take the piss. Boom, broke down, that was shit. 2.17, I'm still not working, our lass ain't working. We lost the dad at Christmas, which, you know, he was a great guy, just retired like a lot of people do, so that was sad. 2.18, 2.19, and this year, our lass is in care now. She's exactly like me, she's a people person. It's not a question... If she was off this Christmas, her, she's rotated on, she'd be working. Birds of so a our Christ Yeah, exactly. So our lass, we're, we're dead opposite on Marvin. We've got nothing in common. If our lass stays in this industry, which I think she will, our Christmas will be Billy, my daughter, Amy, and me, and the five cats, and the tortoise, and the dog, sometime over Christmas. So... If it's day after Boxing Day and two days after that, that's our Christmas. Do you regret giving up a lot of Christmases away for your I, family? I, I don't regret anything in my life and never have, like I said. You know, it's it's part where I am. What I am now is I'm in a position where, like Marvin, starting my own little podcast. Plug that, what's it called? Real Porridge Podcast. Mm -hmm. Just go on YouTube. I posted a bit of content. It could be Sam in a van. I'm just in a van with my mobile. I'm using your tech guy. Get myself, but all I'm going to do is people I've met and I'm going to put the criminal justice system out there because people are clueless. Marvin's touched on some stuff mm -hmm. that I'm happy he's touched on, you know, to make it real for people, but also mental health. So many people contacted me after the last podcast. Good on you. And mate. wait for it, James. <laughs> if you want to support me, Strange Ways Prison Officer mm -hmm. on Amazon, put the links in the description. Your You're supposed to say that. And book two, guys, February 2020. Second Provisionally, bit. Inside Strange Ways mm. will be coming out and um, it will be educational as well as shocking. Good on you, brother. Marv, future, we know your podcast is getting Woo! dropped now. Podcast Tell is coming. Um, Christian Morgan's uh, me presenter, um, no, me host, co-host, is uh, racking them up. We've got four to release in the next couple of months. They've already been out because about Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, a nice So we'll one. leave all the links for Sam's and Marv's in the description. What else, Marv? Um, what else are we doing? Movies, films, books, everything. But I'm just trying to find the order. But follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Instagram all the local mm -hmm. um, places to find us. And uh, yeah, everything's moving speedingly forward in the nicest way possible, you know. Are you surprised? Um, I'm 
quietly surprised at the speed because I've always known I was going to be doing great things. I, always, I don't know what it is. People say it's ego, but it's not. I just know I'm special. And I don't want to sound fucking like I'm, I'm pompous, but people that know me know. You, you, you don't get stabbed 23 times. You don't get hit with an axe in the face twice with an axe. You don't get shot five times straight in the eye and live okay, normally. No. Like, come on, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. You can't honestly look at my life and say I'm normal. You can't honestly say my femoral artery's been punctured and sliced three places, three times. I've never bled out. Do you know what I mean? I've been stabbed in the heart. I've been stabbed in the brain. I've been shot in the eye. How much do you need to see to understand <laughs> I'm Whoa. special? If you'd have fucking told me all this, I wouldn't be sat here with him, mate. <laughs> no, that's the thing, right? So, yeah. look, I feel blessed. I feel... I feel excited, I feel ready, and I feel sort of empowered to help the youngsters, the youth, the up and coming, even the troubled, even the people who have been through it, jump on my journey, be with us, work with us, yeah. do with us, let's all mangle, mate, strategically line, because like my pal says, rising tides lifts all ships. Yeah, I like So that. that's, that's what yeah. we got to do, innit? How's it and been? We've got a documentary yeah, coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, you'll ask him. Hold on, hold on. How's it been sitting across from each other? I'm not going to lie, it was a bit you, fucking tense, man. You, you yeah, first, man. you first. I yeah. liked it, I just mean, he's a man, innit? Like, yeah. look, what, look what you can say about Sam, shake me hand, Sam. Right, he's a real man. Yeah, like, right. a real man doesn't do what he does because of what everyone else thinks and says. Right, he's he's focused, he's driven, and he's sort of his work ethic is insurmountable. Like you don't know what it's like being a prison officer in the mental health department. Right, I've no, I've been around. And I wouldn't even go down in places. <laughs> you got mental health in prison. You think I'm going on the on the on the mental health ward or that? You're fucking twisted. Like, people don't get it. You don't get it. You got people like, <laughs> like eating their shit. Just, bit, just 30 seconds interjection, like he's just said. I got asked on radio once, hardest prisoner you've ever taken down, yeah? Five foot eight, nine and a half stone, mentally unwell. Mental health, yeah. 20 staff trying to restrain him. Yeah. It's like that, mate. They don't care. It's just, it's another world is so traumatic what other people go through, right? So, all the stuff that we've been through, all the stuff we do, it's just nice being in a position now so I actually give back, help, and help everybody grow. Because the more people I steer away from crime, the more people I steer into the right direction, the better I will be as a man. Because that is my purpose from a kid. I've just tried to help everybody I've been in contact with. I've tried to help everybody I've been doing business with. I've done everything I could for all my friends, tried to help them. Like with the stabbings, all the shootings, everything I've ever been arrested for, everything I've been under investigation for, there's no smoke without fire. I'm not holding my hands up to anything, but what I'm saying to you is, you mix with shit, you're gonna smell like shit. I mix with the steepest, hardest criminals this, this country spat out. So obviously I'm gonna get labeled the deepest, hardest criminal that this country spat out. And I've been arrested alongside with all my friends on conspiracies, with um, associations, um, attempted, like I've been nicked, I've been never done it. But I'm here, mm -hmm. it's now, and I'm glad that we're on this transition. You're with doing the great changes. things, Marvin. We're doing great things, and you, man. man. Yes. What about your opinion of Marv sitting across from him, knowing his backstory now and about understanding actually his upbringing? <laughs> 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 right, listen. You know, he's trying to do good things. Um, no, we are doing good things. <laughs> yeah. Trying to change the narrative. <laughs> Do you know what? I was going to say, don't uh, cry, I, I, Sam, I, I, don't no, cry. No, 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 no. He looks emotional, then. I get emotional, me, dead well easy. You know, uh, I'll have to be taking piss. I can't watch anything on telly. Um, do you know what? It stumped me that question. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the interaction. Um, Marvin has led us in some conversation, like strange ways, not all bad. Some officers, not all bad. I think slightly is is a little less aggressive towards the screws towards the end of the, the podcast than we were at the start. You know, might have, oh yeah, perhaps not all like that. No, I bet. No, I've enjoyed it. No, it's nice to meet him. He's obviously a fucking character. Um, yeah. I've enjoyed it. And hopefully, if I get down London, Petticoat Lane, I'll go yeah, buy some off his stall. Yeah. No, 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 I've enjoyed I'll it. Be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be on your podcast, son. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I'll be on there. I'll be on there. Well, we can do Does that, it trigger we? you, knowing that obviously because his previous job, because you had anti-authority in your blood for such a young age, because it was... We've always worked together, me and <laughs> the prison screws. We have freaking relationships. Yeah. But this one, all for the wrong reasons. Now it's going to be all for the right reasons. So yeah. it's, it's, another, it's, it's, it's another parallel fucking... 
what do you call it, um, avenue mm -hmm. for us to grow with, right? I've come on your podcast with him, but we're going to go, on, when I go on his podcast, we're going to talk about other things. I think that'll be a deep conversation yeah, yeah, to go on, on each yeah, other as well. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think these would be relate more because even though I, it's like I'm the middleman, but I felt there's a lot of uncut, un turn stones there we used to that yeah. you could go deep and you could change a lot of lives by yeah, the way yeah, come, come understanding on. the prison system that there is good people as well understanding it's funny that you've led a life of crime and you've worked in the prison system trying to help people but yet both your minds are still unsteady because of the shit that you've seen traumaed yeah but, but Marvin will probably find the same as me if you know what he's going to do it's always going to be there however it's I'm calm now with it yeah. you know um, at peace you know, yeah. sort of. fair enough but it is Christmas lads and I'm going to leave a Christmas message and you two can do it also just want to say a many Christmas to everyone it's been a phenomenal year thanks to guys like Sam and Mar for coming on the podcast and, and growing my numbers as well it's been amazing I know Christmas can be lonely for people but just pick up your head and, and soldier on it a lot of people will lose loved ones it's supposed to be a family time but it can be sad for people but I'm sharing my love and my gratitude for everybody who watches and, and shares especially watching it on Christmas Day I believe this is one of my biggest podcasts to date the two years have been phenomenal today it's been a mo it's an emotional time as well but I really am grateful for everybody that watches and a Merry Christmas in 2021 you'll see me move through the gears again Marv would you like to leave a message for everyone just happy Christmas to everybody I hope you all got what it is you was wishing for this year and I hope you're all looking forward to a prosperous new year and um, a slight change in the people we are I'd like I'm a great believer in healthy mind healthy body and moving forward with the right energy, right purpose and right goals. You can do that with the right diet, right training strategy. So if you're feeling sad, depressed and a little bit lonely, just focus on changing your diet, working in the gym and turning yourself into a, the best human being you can be for you. Um, Sam? Uh, I think I'm gonna sum this, being, being shit for a lot of people, I keep putting stupid little tweets out, but you know, if there's somebody you haven't spoke to for a long time, text them. Even better, give him a phone call. And I'll, I'll sum, same sentiment of these two guys. They've said it all, really. But um, I had a message last week. I told James on the way down, Kieran, if you ever watch this, um, 16 years ago, I worked in Kids Home in Berry, yeah? Um, I loved it. Uh, that, that could have been my vocation, as it were. I got offered a job in strange ways and went that way. But young Kieran, he was 11 then, sent me a message, social media a week ago, just saying, you know, do you remember me? Um, and thanks for everything he did for me. So, you know, you're probably influencing people's lives every day. Just, just bear that in mind. And have the best Christmas and New Year possible. Merry Christmas, everyone. Sam, thanks, mate. Love. Always yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Enjoy Cheers that, mate. Cheers, buddy. Merry Happy Christmas. Christmas. <laughs>